As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot. This dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. <laughs> Somebody compose that song for me. Hello and welcome to a very special summer edition of The Coding Train. So I'm kind of on a little bit of a hiatus right now um, that you, you might have heard me talk about where there's very light content happening in July and August coming back full steam, full force in September. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about schedule and stuff and what's happening and what you can expect. But before I do any of that, in order for you to follow along with the main content that is the content of today's live stream, which is some very special, exciting content that I'm very excited about, you do need to download some software. So I'm just going to tell you what to download so you can set it going in the background while I babble, babble on and on and on about other stuff. So I'm going to open up a web browser, something like this. Go Google, Goggly, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Chrome, Chrome, I think it's pronounced, uh, web browser. And I'm going to ask you to navigate to, if you so choose, um, runwayml.com. So go to runwayml.com, then you'll want to head over to this link under download beta. And here it should start downloading automatically. And there are versions for Mac OS, Windows, Linux, anything else? So whatever you're offering, by the way, I'm talking to somebody over here. Normally I'm just in this room talking to myself, but I am talking to Chris Valenzuela. How'd I do on the pronunciation? Pretty good. One of the founders and creators of Runway, who is here in the chat. Say hi to Chris in the chat to answer your questions and to answer all of my questions as I fumble my way through trying to learn about Runway. Um, so I'm going to come back to talking about what Runway is and what I'm planning to do in today's live stream, but I just wanted to at least set you on to uh, downloading this if you want to. And I'm going to give you a coupon code in a little bit to get some extra uh, credits as well. So, but um, before I do that, so while you're downloading that, what's happening here? Where are you? Where am I? Where are we? Is the, what, is the, what's, what is the meaning of the universe? That is not a question I will answer. Um, so this is a little uh, uh, neighborhood YouTube channel called The Coding Train. And every time I say Coding Train, I then have to blow a train whistle. It's in this contract I signed a while ago. <laughs> and um, where I make uh, computer programming tutorials and otherwise waste time on the internet <laughs> reading things like random numbers. And most of my activity happens during the school year because I also work at a school, New York University, I uh, teach at a program called ITP uh, and also a, that's a graduate program, an undergraduate program called IMA. They're both part of Tisch School of the Arts. So summer is a little bit lighter for me in terms of content anyway, but this summer is a particularly unique summer in that this room that I'm standing in right now is a uh, being closed down and I'm moving the cameras and the equipment to a new room on our, in the Brooklyn campus uh, sometime this month or next month. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose some time where I don't have a recording studio and we'll be setting up a new recording studio which hopefully some better stuff <laughs> and back full force in September. However, there are many videos still outstanding that I am working on editing together and releasing. Number one is and this is very exciting, a full documentation of a video about all of the equipment and software in this room that I'm using. So that's probably going to come out in the next couple weeks, uh, which is good timing considering that I'm closing this down. So this uh, Coding Train Studio, which has been here since, I don't know when I first started. I got to look back and figure out what was the first live stream I did from this room. Um, the first live stream on the Coding Train, I think, was 
2015 or perhaps earlier than that, but I was, I was doing everything from my office downstairs for a while. Anyway, that's not super important. Um, so that's coming out. I have a two-part series on how to program your own processing Java library, which I know everybody on the internet is just waiting. That's gonna blow up YouTube. That's gonna be like highest viewed video ever where I show you how to build a Java library in Eclipse because that's like all the rage now. That's what everybody's doing, right? Right, okay. <clears throat> Take a deep breath here for a second. That's coming out of the, the edited version of the tic-tac-toe coding challenge that I did on a previous live stream is coming and also if I can get my act together, because I forgot to record some stuff for that today, a edited version of the neuroevolution uh, steering car racing coding challenge thing. So that's also coming. So there's a bunch of content that will be coming out on the channel, but this might be the last live stream until September, or I might pop back for a surprise live stream like this one on some topic like runway. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm looking at the chat. now. Let's say you happen to be supporting the coding train as a member on YouTube or a patron on Patreon. And uh, I think I am going to, I, I, I'm putting this out there in the universe because I'm not sure about it, but I might shut down the Patreon and move over entirely to YouTube memberships. Um, you know, I hesitate to have everything all on one platform, but there are some advantages to that. Um, so stay tuned to information about that. But you might be wondering, oh, I signed up for a membership and suddenly now there's no content for two months. Well, I might suggest that you unsign up if that's really an issue. But one of the things that I will be head down working on for the next six weeks is a uh, edi second edition of the Nature of Code book. And I've talked about that on previous live streams. So I might do some member-only live streams with work sessions on that book and share some um, PDFs. So that's, uh, that's what I'll be doing in terms of the member community um, um, in the next couple months. Um, I'm looking over at the chat. I think that's the main s sort of announcement-y things that I wanted to talk about. Nature of Code books, summer schedule, tell you to download Runway. I don't know. Anything else? I'll take a momentary break here. I don't know what it means to take a break. I mean, I'm just gonna take a break from talking. Anybody have any trouble downloading Runway? If so, let us know in the chat. <laughs> oh. Now I will tell you that Coding Train is sponsored by water. It's not exactly wet, and there are different kinds of flow, like laminar flow and turbulent flow. I think what I'm drinking is more of a turbulent flow. Refreshing. Actually, I make, that's my joke. It's very lame, but it is my joke. Um, this, there's no um, sponsor for today's live stream. However, I do want to mention that I am actually an advisor to the uh, company Runway that makes Runway. So this, while this isn't exactly like a paid product <laughs> endorsement, um, there is that relationship there which I feel is important to disclose. So this is something like of a sponsored video in a way by Runway itself. And you can find out more about the company Runway itself and the people behind Runway. And I know they're doing a lot of hiring, so maybe you want to apply for a job with Runway, um, all at the Runway website. Uh, I'm seeing if there's any questions that anybody had any... Klaus Vogel writes, I have runway running. Wexer82, thank you for your membership of the coding train. Mwah! Uh, you have a little um, comma waving emoji icon thing. I forget what that means. <laughs> um, couple, a couple, a couple, two months, six months, one year. Who, who in the chat has the longest, I think if I go here to YouTube slash the coding train slash join, um, it'll tell me. Does that tell me anything? No. Maybe because I'm already a member. Oh, no, because I'm not logged in. Who knows? Oh, look, I'm live. Comma waving. Okay, okay, there's me. All right. Um, so, is, okay, Co Cookie Crumb is asking, is runway okay for beginners? Because I'm a beginner. Yes! Oh, I said that, I said that way too loudly. Let me say that more calmly. Yes. So I think there are, on, on the, uh, runways are really interesting thing and I, I think that it would be best for me to start using it to explain it, but uh, because I think there are aspects of it that the whole system by its nature, the way that it's built as a piece of software is meant for beginners. But it is a tool that allows you to explore pretty deeply 
the world of machine learning models, some of which are quite sophisticated and you can wander down a lot of advanced and tricky and complex rabbit holes. So I think there's a wide range here of kind of understanding and require, not required, but that, that is part of using Runway. But my, what I like to do on the coding train is have everything, uh, I'm making my assumption that you've never seen it before. I would say the only pre, there are really not any prerequisites for today, which is pretty rare. Although eventually at some point I'm gonna move towards using Runway with maybe processing and with P5.js. And then you might, the prerequisite would have some familiarity with those platforms and basic coding knowledge. But I am here to help. Um, uh, I am here to help. And yes, this is appropriate for beginners. All right, so I think, uh oh, somebody gave me a super chat, which I have to acknowledge. Charlie Englund, thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, let's see. All right, um, uh, any update on our mysterious bug that we were talking about earlier? It's fixed, oh, exciting. <laughs> I, was, I was all exciting to debug something. Oh, we have a new member. <laughs> Welcome to new member, Bal Simpson. Thank you for joining the coding train. I just ring make all the noise things. Like, you know, I should automate all this stuff, whatever. Okay, so let's get, let's get going. So what I'm going to do, so I, this is, this is something slightly different from my usual live streams <laughs> in the sense that this is entirely themed around runway and ultimately it may not make sense or be necessary to edit this into smaller, shorter videos. But just in case it does happen to make sense to do that because there's a lot of me babbling and I'm sure I'll waste some time later chasing down some weird bug or piece of documentation or reading random numbers. I'm going to assume actually that I'm gonna make two video tutorials, extemporaneously improvising, but one will just be an introduction to Runway as a platform and signing up for a Runway account. And then the other will be maybe doing a coding challenge where I try to get the results, the output of a machine learning model into a P5.js sketch, and I'll get to that later. Um, and really, again, let me just mention, if you have questions about Runway, um, ask them in the chat because you can have a whole completely separate conversation going on without me uh, with uh, Chris, one of the founders and creators of Runway here. And, and maybe there are also even some other people from Runway watching. Hi, people from Runway. <laughs> I'm probably gonna screw this up, so careful what you wish for. All right, here we go. Um, all right, um, and let me just cover one other thing because HowlRound is asking. Um, do you have to pay to keep using it? So I, I will get into this as I look at Runway. Um, Runway is something that you can use. You don't need to enter a credit card. You can use it without paying any money. However, there are some caveats to this. The, one of the things that I'll be doing is running the machine learning models with Runway in the cloud, and that requires paying a fee by the minute or by the hour? The minute. By the minute for cloud GPU usage. Every Runway user, when you sign up, you automatically get $10 of free credits. And as I go through the sign-up process, I'm gonna give you a coupon code, it's just Coding Train, which will give you an additional $10. So you'll be able to get $20 in credits for free. Um, and you actually do quite a bit with uh, $20 in credits, you'd be surprised. Um, and then uh, towards the end of the live stream, maybe I'll talk about ways that you can actually run the machine learning models locally on your laptop, if your laptop has a GPU. Obviously, there's, some limit, there's quite a bit of limitation to that, depending on what computer you're using. Um, but that would also allow you to run it without uh, uh, paying any money whatsoever. Did I get that pretty much right? All right. Okay, so... Um, like you without the beard, but I'm wearing the beard. Uh, where, is that a thing you say, wearing the beard? That's weird. I don't think you wear a beard. Maybe you do, whatever. All right, so let's go to <laughs> the homepage of Runway, and I am now going to start artificially, as if I'm starting over, introducing you to Runway, and then going through the steps to download and sign up for Runway, and we'll see how that goes. Um, let me... Um, and um, I think what I'll do, so, I think in the new studio, by the way, I won't have this turning the cameras on and off thing, which I'm actually quite sad about, because it brings me a lot of joy. Eli writes, no, the beard wears you, which I think is a very profound <laughs> statement. Okay. By the way, I just have to highlight this. Look, see, this is the homepage of Runway ML. 
You can zoom in here, we see this is some sort of computing machine running the runway software. This is probably like the dense pose model maybe. And then, but I just wanna like highlight this. We go over here into the corner here, oh look at this. Nature of Code by some strange person named Daniel Schiefman. Okay, uh, there we go. Nice to see that there. There's some other books. There's a lot of nice little Easter eggs in here if you keep looking. Here Comes Everybody. This is a great book by Clay Shirky. I think I might have read all of these books here. We'll see. All right. Um, <laughs> great. Alka reports that signing up and entering coding train code went smoothly, which is great. All right. <clears throat> I have no plan for this. I mean, everybody's aware of that, but I just feel the need to say that one more time since Chris is sitting over there. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a tutorial series on the coding train about a piece of software called Runway. So what I'm gonna do in this particular video is just show you the Runway website. I'm going to download the Runway software. I'm gonna sign up for a Runway account. And I'm gonna kinda of click through and show you the basics of how it works. Now, what is even Runway and why uh, might you use it? Now, now, before I even get to that though, I feel like it's important to say a couple things. One is, Runway is not something that I've made. Runway is made by a company, also called Runway. They happen to be, um, some of the founders of Runway and creators of Runway are alumni of a program where I teach. That makes sense, ITP. And I'm an advisor to the company. But this is a tool that you can use uh, starting today if you download it for free with, uh, with a, a coupon from the coding train. Let me, let me do this one again, just one more time. Just, I, I won't keep doing this over and over again, but I just needed a little like warm up. That was a warm up. <laughs> I said too much. I don't need to go on and on about this way too much. Okay. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to a new tutorial series on the coding train uh, using a piece of, about a piece of software called Runway. So what is Runway? How do you download and install Runway and kind of tinker around with it? That's all I'm gonna do in this particular video. Now let me be clear, Runway is not something that I've made. Uh, Runway is uh, made by a company, a new company called <laughs> Runway itself. Uh, it's a piece of software. Um, you can use it, you can download it for free, you can use it for free. There are aspects of it that require cloud GPU credits, which I'll get into later, and uh, you'll, you can get some free credits and a coupon code that you'll find in the description of this video. But really, I wanna just talk to you about what it is, because I'm so excited about it, I'm planning to use it in the future in a lot of future tutorials and coding challenges and teaching things that I'm gonna do. Um, and I also should just mention that I'm an advisor to the company Runway itself, so I'm involved in that capacity. All right, so what is Runway? Now, right here it says, machine learning for creators. Bring the power of artificial intelligence to your creative project with an intuitive and simple visual interface. Start exploring new ways of creating today. So this, this to me is like the core of Runway. I am somebody who's a creative coder. I'm working with processing and P5.js. You might be working with other pieces of software uh, that's just commercial software, coding environments, you're writing your own software, and you want to make use of recent advances in, mach in machine learning. You read about this model, you saw this YouTube video about this model, can you use it in your thing? Well, before Runway, <laughs> one of the things you might have done is find your way to some GitHub repo that had like this very long readme of about all the different like dependencies you need to install and configure and then you've got to download this and install this and then make, build this library and, and you can really get stuck there for a long time. So Runway is an all-in-one piece of software with an interface that basically will run machine learning models for you, install and configure them without you having to do any other work but press a button called install and it gives you an interface to play with those models, experiment with those models, and then broadcast the results of those models to some other piece of software. And there's a variety of different ways you can do that broadcasting through um, HTTP requests, through OSC messages, and all these things might not make sense to you, which is totally fine. I'm going to poke through them and show you how they work with an eye towards at least showing you how to pair runway with processing and how to pair a runway with P5.js and I'll also show you where there's lots of other examples and things you can uh, do with other platforms and stuff like that. All right, that was pretty good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, so um, I'm going to... So the first step you should do is click here under down... the first. So the first step you should do is click here under download runway beta. It will automatically trigger a download for Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. Um, I've actually already downloaded and installed runway, so I'm gonna kind of skip that, but uh, skip that stuff and just actually now run the software. 
So I'm going to go over here and I have, uh, I have the runway icon already here as part of my, what is this thing called in the Mac? The dock? Who knows? So I'm going to click that, run runway. Ah, and now it's saying, welcome to runway, sign in to get started. Okay, so if you already have an account, you could just sign in with your account. I do already have an account, but I'm going to create a new one just so we can follow along with the process. So I'm going to go here, create an account. I'm going to enter my email address, which is, shh, don't tell anyone, daniel at thecodingtrain.com. Then I'm going to make a uh, username and password. My username will be Choo Choo. Do you think that's going to be taken already? My password, all right, let's, let's pause for a second. I'm going to generate a password. I'm not currently sponsoring today's live stream, but hey, Dashlane, I think you can sign up at dashlane.com slash coding train or something. <laughs> they were a sponsor of a previous live stream. You can find that there. Um, is there a password generator somewhere in here? How am I not there? Oh, password changer. Tools. Password history. Password generator. There it is. Um, any requirements of the password I should know about? Let's do like, oh, wait. <laughs> This is not such a good idea. All right, hold on, everybody. <laughs> no, that's it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to generate a new password now <laughs> that you can't see it. Uh, copy password. Uh, I'm going to copy it. I'm copying the password in. And I'm just going to put it also. Uh, put it down here. Please hold. Okay. Um, and there. So can I put you back here? Oh, that's, there we go. All right. Now that I've put in my very strong password, I'm going to click next. And I'm going to give my details. Daniel Schiffman, the coding train, create account. Ah, and it's giving me a verification code to daniel at thecodingtrain.com. Let me grab my mobile device. That'll be the easiest way for me to read that email. Oh, I even got a notification. Google thinks that an email from Runway is a very important email because I have it set up to only give me a notification for important emails. Uh, I'm going to say six. I don't think there's any issue with me. Um, I guess maybe though I will shut this off as well. Uh, just, just for security's sake. If you can like determine what keys I pressed based on audio signals, then you're doing very well. <laughs> uh, validate. Okay. Um, put you back on there. Great. Account has now been created. Right. Account has now been created and I can click start. All right. So this is that, I'm just going to like minimize the browser so we can be clear on what we're actually seeing that's part of Runway. What's this here? Oh, <laughs> that might have been the password. I think I... <laughs> Hold on a sec. Let me turn that off. Was that the password that I just revealed by accident? <laughs> this is going remarkably well. That was totally the password. <laughs> Everyone has my Runway password account now. All right, I'm going to change the password. I'm sure I can do that. Manage my account. Um, edit profile. Uh, password. Change password. Current password. New password. I'm going to beat you all. Hackers are everywhere. Update. Oh. Great. I changed my password. So now my account is secured again. Um, I'm logged in. And let me go back to Runway. It logged me out. That was nice of it. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. Close this. There we go. I closed the password generator. Oh, looks like I got some sort of super chat, which I will now check on. Thank you. Oh, Wexer82. That's very nice of you just to say thank you. Um, okay. Ah, there we go. All right. 
Is this everything you imagined the coding train would be? Just me trying to like not give people my password by accident? That's basically what 90% of the time is. All right. All right. So once you've downloaded, installed Runway, and signed up for an account, logged into your account, you will find this screen. So if you've been using Runway for a while, you might then end up here clicking on open workspaces because workspaces are a way of collecting a bunch of different models that you want to use for a particular project into a workspace. But we haven't done any of that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just click on browse models. And if you've never run Runway <laughs> and clicked on browse models, this is going to be a very exciting moment for you because there are a lot of models which you suddenly can play at your fingertips that you could just play around with. And I haven't even planned this. So I think we should just pick one somewhat randomly. Um, I'm going to use StyleGAN later. Anybody have one that they see that they want to request? I would love to use Dense Pose would be kind of fun. Um, attention GAN. Oh, what's the one? Is there one where I can draw? Oh, yeah. Is that Spade Coco? Yeah, so that, I think that'll be a good one. Um, thank you, Sundar10. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so the first thing that I might suggest that you do is just click on a model and see what you can do to play with it in the Runway interface itself. Because one of the things that's really wonderful about Runway is as a piece of software and interface, you can explore and experiment with the model to understand how it works what it does well, what it doesn't well, do well, what it does at all, before starting to bring it into your own software or your own project. So I'm going to pick this Spade Coco model, which I have never looked at before. It's very legitimate me. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm going to click on that. Um, and now here I can find out some more information about the model. So I can find out what does the model do. It generates realistic images from sketches and doodles. Um, I can find out more information about the model. For example, this is the paper. Um, that describes this model, semantic image synthesis with spatially adaptive normalizations trained on Coco stuff data set. Remember when someone asked, is this, is, this, is this tutorial for beginners? Well, it is for beginners in that you're a beginner, you can come here and play around with it. But there's a, there's a lot of, it, you can go very deep too if you want to find the paper, read through the notes, and understand more about what this model, how it was built, what data it was trained on, which is always a very important question to ask whenever you're using a machine learning model. Um, so I can also, uh, we can see um, there are attributions here. So this is the organization that trained the model. These are the authors of the paper. Um, we can see when, what the size of it, uh, when it was created, if it's CPU and GPU supported. Um, and then very important, it's down here, but I'm actually going to highlight it here. We can click on the license. So this is Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 License. So I, I'm not going to pretend to be a lawyer here or be able to give you proper advice on the, you know, the, the, beyond the scope of what I'm doing here is the nuances of what all these licenses mean and how, how and where you can use them. But you can find out and do that research yourself right here in the Runway interface. Um, we can also go under Gallery and we can see just some images that have been created. And so we can get an idea. This is something, this is a model that's themed around something called Im image segmentation. So I have an image over here. What does it mean to do image segmentation? Well, this image is segmented, <laughs> divided into a bunch of different segments. Those segments are noted by color. So there's like a purple segment, a pink segment, a light green segment. And those colors are tied to labels in the model, essentially, that know about a kind of thing that it could draw in that area. So you could do image segmentation in two ways. I could take an existing image, like an image of me, and try to say like, oh, this, I'm going to segment it. This is where my head is. This is where my hand is. This is where my hand is. Or I could generate images by sort of drawing on a blank image saying, put a hand over here, put a head over here. And it looks like, at least the example we're seeing here is kind of like a, um, um, what do you call those things in art? <laughs> Not a landscape. <laughs> you know, it's a bowl of fruit that has a name. How come I can't think of that word? The whole chat's going to say it instantly. Uh, art bowl of fruit. How come I can't think of this word? Um, I'm going crazy. Still life. Is that what I mean? I think it's a still life. Is that what I mean? Maybe it's just a still life. I thought it was something else. Whatever. <laughs> um, all right. And that will get edited out of the final version of this video. Okay. So that's what image segmentation is, at least in the way that I understand it. Um, okay. So let me go here. Now, 
what I want to do is I want to add this to, so now I want to use this. So what have I done so far? <laughs> Thank you, James Craig. And uh, all these super chats today, this does not usually happen. Is YouTube like promoting super chats? Thank you, James Craig. I really appreciate it. You, that gets a train whistle. Okay. <laughs> oh, what a time to be alive. <laughs> um, all right. Where was I? What have I done so far? I've downloaded Runway. I've poked around the models and I've just clicked on one. Now I want to use that model. I want to play with it. I want to see it run. So I'm going to go here to Add to Workspace. It's right up here, Add to Workspace. Now I don't have a workspace yet, so I need to make one. And I'm going to call this workspace Red, I actually just want to leave it as this name, Red Current Multiculturalism. So it'll automatically name a workspace for you. And uh, did it, did it, breaking news, I'm being told that these workspaces are named from colors and artisms. Fruits. fruits. Oh, fruits. Fruits and artisms. So maybe you got blueberry um, abstract expressionism or something. All right, so I'm going to hit uh, create. No, no, I'm going to name it though. I'm going to say coding train live stream. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit create. Now I have a workspace. And you can see this is my workspace. I have only one model added to this workspace over here. And it's kind of highlighting up for me right now what to do. I need to choose an input source. So every machine learning model is different. Some of them expect um, text input. Some of them expect image input. Some of them might expect input that's from, that's arbitrary scientific data from a spreadsheet. Then the model uh, is going to take that input in, run it through the model, and produce an output. And that output might be numbers, or it also might be an image, or it might be more text. So now we're in the sort of the space of a case-by-case -case basis, but if I understand image segmentation correctly, I'm pretty sure the input is going to be both an image, and the input and the output are both going to be an image, right? So let's make a little diagram here. This whiteboard has shut off, but... Uh, let's make a little diagram. So we have this, uh, what was this model called again? Spade? Spade Coco. So we have this machine learning model. Presumably there's some neural network architecture in here. Maybe it has some convolutional layers. This is something we would want to read that paper to find out more. Runway is going to allow us to just use it out of the box. And you know, I certainly would always recommend reading more about it I want to learn more about how to use it. So my assumption here is I'm in my software that I want to build, I want to uh, maybe create a drawing piece of software that allows a user to segment out an image. So you can imagine maybe um, I'm going to like kind of draw something that's one color. Look, I could use different color markers. Like I'm going to fill, you know, I'm going to sort of fill this image in with a bunch of different colors. Some of these markers don't work. This is not important. And then I'm going to feed that into the model and out will come an image. So we have input and we have output. And again, this is going to be different for every model that we might pick in Runway. Although there's a lot of conventions. A lot of the models expect images as input and output images. Some of them expect text as input and output an image or image as input and output text et cetera, and so on and so forth. So here under choose input source, um, I'm going to click segmentation. Oh, wow, look, oh, wait, I'm not in the right thing. Shoot. Hold on, let me, um, can I get back to where I was before? Um, let me actually just remove it. Well, actually, if I click file, this is fine. Uh, I don't know why I'm obsessed. I'm going to I'm going to delete it. Just so by the way, one thing you could do is you could delete a model. <laughs> and I'm going to delete it and then I'm just going to add it again. In case you missed that part, you get to see it again. I'm going to add to workspace cucumber multiculturalism. No, I don't want a new uh, I want to go to my workspace. Oh, add a model. So what did I what did I miss here? Let's see. I'm discovering the runway interface. So I click here. Recently used, Spade Coco, add to workspace. There we go. Oh, oh, you know what? It must not have saved my workspace because I, there was nothing in it. <laughs> All right, no problem. We're going to do it again. Red, the nice thing about this is we get to have more automatic workspace names. Um, let's see. So I'm going to say coding train live stream again. 
I just wanted it to be, I just wanted it to be back to here. In case we edit, now, now I guess I can't not do it without thinking about we're gonna edit it, all right. All right, so now what I wanna do is choose the input source in runway for the model. So something that's gonna produce a segmented image. And um, so that could be co coming from a file. It could actually come from a network connection, which I'll get into maybe in a future video or you can explore on your own. I'm just gonna pick segmentation. And now this is like the greatest thing ever because what's just happened is runway, your image segmentation is a common enough feature of machine learning models that Runway has built into it an entire drawing engine so that you can play around with image segmentation. So, um, and you can see these are the colors for different labels. So maybe what I want, it looks like it's a lot of transportation stuff. Um, so maybe what I want is, let's try, let's try drawing some people. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> If we do an edited version, this will get sped up. How am I doing? <laughs> Let's draw two people. I don't think this is actually how people look in a real image. We're gonna, it'll be interesting to see what it does with this. <laughs> um, and let's put an airplane flying above. I wonder if I don't need to, do I need to, it'd be interesting to think about, do I need, does it matter if I do it in the shape of the airplane or is it just gonna figure it out because it knows what the shape of an airplane is. That's actually a much better airplane than I imagined myself drawing. What else? Um, elephant, ooh, oh boy, there's a lot of other stuff that's not transportation. Wine glass. This is gonna be a very large wine glass. Well, two people with an uh, airplane and a wine glass flying overhead. Okay, <laughs> how are we doing? Now, I'm going to choose an output, and I just want to do preview, right? Because preview right now is like, I'm not actually, I don't need to export this, I don't you need to use it somewhere else, I just want to play around with it in Runway itself. So I'm going to hit preview, and ah, and here comes the most, not the most, and now here's the thing, so, okay, sorry. <laughs> now I have selected my input, which is just the segmentation interface of Runway itself. I have selected my output, which is just a preview. Now it's time for me to run the model. And here we go, uh, run remotely. So a remote GPU enabled, and you can see just by signing up for Runway, I have $10 in remote GPU credits. I, it'll be interesting to see how much just running this once actually uses. Um, so one thing I'll mention now, uh, if you want to get additional credits, um, I can go over here. This is like the sort of icon for my profile. I can click on this. Um, I'm going to go now to uh, here, um, get more credits. Is that where I want to go? Yeah, I'm going to go to get more credits. And this is going to take me to a browser page. And I could have certainly pay for more credits, but I'm going to click here and I'm going to redeem credits by saying coding train right here. So if you would like to get an additional $10 in credits, you can do this. And we can see now I should have uh, $20 in credits. So I can close that, minimize the browser, and um, go back to um, here, my workspace, my model. Oops, um, where do I want to go? This is, this is workspace, here we go, there we go. I'm back here. So this icon up here, just so uh, we're clear, this icon up here is your workspaces, of which I only have one with one model that's connected to remote GPU. And if I wanted to look at other models, I would go here to this uh, icon. All right, now I'm gonna press run remotely. Running the model remotely. Good thing I have a very long sound effect. <laughs> oh, well. oh my. <laughs> oh, it is so beautiful. I cannot believe it. <laughs> so this is what the Spade Coco machine learning model generates. It's really interesting to see the result here. So you can see me knowing nothing about this model, kind of how it works and what to expect, it gets some pretty weird results with it. Probably if I were a bit more thoughtful, maybe if I even like filled in the entire space, right? I probably, I left so much of it blank. I also included like a giant wine glass with two people. 
It's very uh, kind of creepy looking, although this, I think this sort of resembles me in some strange sort of way. <laughs> um, and we can see here, look at this, five cents. Here's my five cents image. But, what's that? Oh, I can live paint? Okay, and apparently I can live paint. All right, that's crazy. Let's try doing that. So the reason why it took a long time was it was just kind of booting it up. So one thing I should mention is the reason why that took a long time, it was like spinning up the server and everything to start actually running the model. But now that it's running in real time, it can happen much more quickly. So let's try adding. I want to add something like, oh, what if I want to add an umbrella? Let's add an umbrella to this person. And uh, there we go. Uh, and like this one, this person's going to have a suitcase. Whoops, did I not click on that? Oh, I'm, I'm drawing down here. Look at me, like not knowing how computers work. Uh, this, is the, this is the input, so I need to draw here. Let's draw a little suitcase. Um, what else? Oh, let's put on some eyeglasses. Uh, this, to make this person look more like me, I, I keep doing that. It's funny how my instinct is to do that. Um, put on some eyeglasses here. <laughs> Those are great eyeglasses. <laughs> Tennis racket, cup, knife bowl. I kind of want to start over. Um, let me start over. How do I, can I clear this? Like, oh, probably this. Oh, fill bucket. Oh, that would have been, that's useful. Is there a clear the whole thing button? I can undo. Uh, or trash. There we go, clear. Um, so let's try uh, filling it. So what would be a good thing to fill it with that's like background? Dirt. Fence. Let's try floor wood. So let's try filling it with wood floor. Oh, whoa. Then let's put, let's try to put like some fruit. Um, so was there like apple here? So let me put an apple. Gonna paint that. Ooh, this is looking much better now. Uh, let's put like an orange right next to it. Let's put a couple oranges. We're gonna make a little bowl of fruit. Wow, this is crazy. <laughs> wow. Uh, where's my search? Um, oh, here it is. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, what other fruits should I? What, is there a banana? It's probably a banana. Okay. So let's put a banana. Okay. This, I got to stop. That's pretty amazing. So again, here was just a little moment later of Bean being a little more thoughtful to think about how this model actually works and what, what might happen. You know, I, if I knew, if I looked at the data set, which is the fairly well known, I imagine, Coco image data set, that's probably going to be, give me even more information to think about what it's going to do well. But you can see how it's um, able to sort of think about a sort of little, see, a little, little pile of fruit here on a you know, wood background. It almost looks a little more like cloth, like it's sitting on a table. Um, pretty realistic. Um, and yes, Charlie um, England points out, which is correct, this is continuing to use the GPU credits. And we can see um, that, you know, still though, I've, even with doing a bunch of live painting, I've just used 10 cents there. So um, you can do a lot with the free $10 just in playing around. Simon said spade cocoa. I'm just curious here to Google uh, spade cocoa data set. Or maybe that was from like, it's the cocoa data set, yeah. Cocoa data set is this data set. So I would encourage you also to check out this uh, URL with a lot more information on what's proven about the data that was used to train this particular image segmentation model. All right. Um, <clears throat> Okay, let me take a minute here. Let's see if people have any, let me take a minute to see if there's any questions that people want to ask in the chat that I can either answer myself or ask uh, Chris about. Yes, and so um, uh, I noticed that Chris just wrote in the chat, um, some models only work on remote GPU. So um, if you want, I don't know if this, do you know if, if offhand if this is one that will work locally? No, so this is one that only works on remote GPU. Other models were, work locally. I think I'm going to try to run PoseNet, um, which can run locally, and so it won't use any GPU credits for that. Um, and then some models will work locally but require another installation, an, another dependency, which is something called Docker, um, which I could talk about or install at some point. But I know that Runway is working on um, uh, making that process even easier 
um, to be able to run stuff locally. Um, okay. Can I lower resolution to speed up? That's an interesting question. So I, oh, I can see here that the resolution is set to 640 by 360. Is that something that can change with this model? Could, but it, every model has a different resolution. Oh, no, but the, but the model, I couldn't change that in the interface, yeah. So, so this is a good question because you know, the way most machine learning models work, in particular if they're fixed inputs and fixed outputs, not like a kind of sequential model, the, the output is fixed, the input is fixed. It requires a particular resolution because the neural network is expecting a certain amount of numbers to come in. So you can do, to some extent, you can do resizing and resampling. I mean, if I go back to my diagram here, like I could do some resizing and resampling here, or I could do some resizing and resampling here before to prepare the input or after I get the output, but the model itself, the input image has to be a particular dimension and the output is only gonna come in that dimension. Some, mo some models are released, I think, with you know, like sort of different versions of it, which, which maybe output different dimensions. I think I've seen that. But in this particular one, it's fixed dimensions. Okay, um, all right, I, I could like play with this for, ooh. I could play with this forever, but I think I'm gonna not. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right, so now let's, let me think about this. What else do I wanna show here before I move on? I think what I'll do is two separate, like sort of like tutorials, one using PoseNet with processing, and then one using uh, this uh, StyleGAN uh, Rainbows with P5.js. Um, but I want to think if just in sort of this like general tutorial about the platform as a whole, um, what else do I want to say? Um, so let's look at, um, so input wise, I could also, so I chose to do segmentation here, but I could also use a file. So if I wanted to open a file on the computer, um, I could do it that way. And then output, if I change to export, um, I could also actually export that to uh, a variety of different formats. But of course, I could also right here, just under preview, I can click this download save button, and now I am saving forevermore um, that this particular image as a file. Now, what's really important here, actually more important here, is under network. So if what I wanted to do is click over here under network, this means I can now communicate with this particular machine learning model from my own software, whether that's software that I've downloaded or purchased that somebody else has made that speaks one of these particular protocols, or my own software that I'm writing in just about any programming language or environment if you, if you have a framework or module or library or support these types of protocols. So, uh, and one of the nice things here, if I click on JavaScript, it's actually, we can see there's actually a bit of code here that you can actually just copy paste into your JavaScript to run it uh, directly. So I'm gonna come back, um, OSC is also a really popular uh, protocol messaging, network messaging protocol for creative coders. It stands for open sound control and allows you to send data between applications. So I will also um, kind of come back and um, uh, in, a, in a separate video and show you about how some of these work. I should also probably mention that the Runway software itself works in a very similar way to a piece of software called Weckinator that you might be familiar with. Weckinator is um, a, a software that was created by Rebecca Fiebrink um, uh, years ago that um, allows you to train a neural network uh, with data sent over OSC messaging and then get the results of that um, after the fact. The, I think the real sort of key difference here is Runway is really set up to support a huge treasure trove of pre-trained models. Um, whereas Weckinator was more for training on training neural networks on the fly with small bits of data. Um, but, and I will say that one of the things that Runway is planning maybe by September is to start coming out with features for training your own model as well. Um, okay. So people are asking, I noticed this is being discussed, but I wanna see if I understand this correctly as well. So the model is still running but unless it's not actively, um, so it's still, right now it's using cloud credits because it's running. 
Yeah, but if I were to click, so I, in a way I like wasted a little bit of my credits by talking without using it. <laughs> but if I wanted to, be, uh, but as soon as I click stop, it's no longer running um, on the cloud. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just looking at the questions. All right. Uh, I think that's most of, let me wrap, do a little wrap up here um, in case we try to like edit this together as something that's, um, ooh, Chainer coming soon, that's exciting. So if I go here, I just wanna understand this, I do this, okay, got it, okay. So I'm gonna go here, all right. I'm trying to think, I guess, yeah, let me, let, me, let me wrap this up here and then we'll go to doing, what time is it? I have plenty of time, go to do a PoseNet with processing because I think that'll be a good um, example of seeing the full workflow. So thanks for this, uh, watching this introduction to Runway, just sort of the basics of downloading and installing the software, what it is from a high level point of view, um, what the features of the interface work, um, how to get some free cloud credits. And what I would suggest that you do after watching this video is uh, download, run it, uh, run the software and go to this browse models page. So you can see there's a lot of different models for looking at motion, generative, community, text, recognition. Click around here. Uh, let's try this recognition one, uh, face recognition, dense cap. Um, where is PoseNet um, in here? That might be under motion. Uh, dense pose PoseNet. So here's a model called PoseNet, which performs real-time skeletal tracking of one or more people. I've covered this model um, in other uh, libraries like the ML5.js library with TensorFlow.js. And so what I'm going to do in the next video is use this model PoseNet in Runway with my webcam, running it locally on this computer without requiring cloud credits, and then get the results of this model in processing itself. So I'm going to show you that whole workflow. But poke around, click around, find, find a model you lock, like, <laughs> poke around, click around, find a model that you like. Let me know about it in the comments. Share images that you made with it and look forward to seeing what you make with Runway. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just looking at the chat, but I guess I don't really need to. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is kind of, um, I'm going to go to, let's, let's find something. So I want to go to Runway ML. Processing. I'm gonna actually just stay here. So I need this. I want to have PoseNet up here and running. Okay. So I'm gonna go here. I want to make sure I have processing up. So let me run processing. Oh, wait a sec here. Here. <laughs> Processing. So I'm just getting set up for the next sort of tutorial module here that we'll do. peek at the example to see whether I want to try to just sort of like write it or just copy it in. <laughs> be it. Uh, so you need the runway host, the port, oh so it requires the OSC library. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I think what I'll do is I'll bring this stuff in slowly piece by piece from the example. Um, that'll be useful. Okay, so we have this. this and I've got runway open, I've got processing open, and I've got the browser open on uh, the runway examples. Okay. Uh, Ava in the chat is asking, what about creative coding in Blender? using Python scripting interface to generate geometry or something. 
So yeah, you can, you know, I'm not an expert on Blender. I've used it almost, you know, I've used it for maybe less than five minutes of my entire life. But most pieces of software, and I'm pretty sure Blender included, come with capabilities that allow you to communicate with the Blender software itself over the network. Now Blender is a special case because it's completely free and open source software. So if it didn't have that capability, you could actually build that capability in, or more likely somebody has already done this. I know that there's like add-ons and things for Blender. But absolutely, if you wanted to generate, I would say like textures for a 3D model in Blender, if you wanted to control Puppeteer, a, uh, like a character in Blender with a like pose detecting model. These are all things you could absolutely do by pairing Blender and Runway together. Um, all right, so let me, this I might also need to do some diagramming uh, here to talk about the different pieces. Actually, there's no cloud, I don't think there's gonna be a cloud involved here, if I'm correct. Um, all right, so the next, the next thing that I'm going to do, I will get started with right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just click this here. Let me just check a couple of things to make sure things are working. Yep, yeah, all right. Excuse me. Hello and welcome to another video tutorial about working with Runway and running machine learning models in Runway itself. Now, before you watch this video tutorial, if you've never used Runway before, you might want to go back and look at my introduction to Runway, how to download and install it. But to be honest, you probably can figure that out if you just go to runwayml.com and click on download beta. You're going to want to then uh, download and open the Runway software. Uh, you'll go then to uh, Browse Models. Uh, I might go here under Motion and I'm going to click uh, PoseNet and you'll find yourself right here. So this is where I am. I've installed Runway, I've downloaded it, and I'm on the page in the Runway software for the PoseNet machine learning model. Now what is PoseNet? PoseNet is a machine learning model that performs real-time skeletal tracking of one or more people. And guess what? I'm a person and I've got Runway running here with PoseNet, so I'm going to run it. So let's actually first click Add to Workspace. So I already have a workspace that I've made in the previous video called Coding Train Livestream. I want to choose an input source, which I want it to be my webcam. So uh, yep, Runway, go right ahead. And there I am. And then I want to choose an output source, which eventually I want to be processing, because I want to get the results of running this machine learning model PoseNet into processing itself. But for right now, I'm just going to click on uh, Preview. So I click on Preview. Oh, and I have to run. But guess what? So this is different than what I've showed in previous videos. I've got an option for run locally. And in fact, this model can only be run locally. It would be silly to run this one in the cloud because I'd have to spend all this time sending the data over the network. And it's very easy for it to run. This is a very small, fast model. It can be run on most modern computers. So I'm going to click run locally. So it requires no GPU credits. Absolutely can be used for free. And we can see there it goes. It's running right now. It is making guesses as to where the various key points of my skeleton are on my body in the output that's viewed below. Um, just looking at this here. So I'm looking at, now one of the nice things that I'm seeing here is that there's so many um, options that I can like tweak and I can tweak all these in real time, right? Now, is there any of these that would make it, oh, I think if I do single pose, it'll run faster, right? Oh, but I have to stop running it to change those. But these can, I can change in real time. Ah, I see. <laughs> this, welcome to the coding train, where a person on the internet makes tutorials about things that he's never used before. <laughs> uh, but that's the way to learn. You have to just try it. You just have to just go for it. Leap of faith here. Um, all right, so let me just actually stop for a second. Let me change this to, um, single pose, and we do run locally again. All right, that's good to know. Okay, so then are there other things here? I'm just curious, that might, that, that might speed up the, the performance? Architecture. Architecture, like if I make it lower? Mm -hmm. So let's see, architecture. Uh, ah, okay, so 
uh, we can see this option here, mobile net architecture. The larger the value, the larger the size of the layers. Just trying to zoom into this. Uh, and the more accurate the model. Set this to a smaller value. So let's, let's try setting this to 0.5 and run it again. That's pretty good. I'm not going to get too hung up on performance. I'm just always curious about this stuff. Let's do stop image scale factor. What to scale the image by? Oh, so I can like reduce the resolution even more. All right, I'm going to stop tinkering around with this. This is not really super relevant to what I'm trying to get at here, and I'm going to put this all back uh, to what it was. So ultimately, I just want to run it in processing. Okay, uh, max pose detections. Let's keep it a single pose, score threshold, camera options, width height. Okay, um, great. So one of the nice things about working with runway and its models is a lot of times models have different parameters and values and things that you can tweak and change to try running it in different ways. And this is really, these are sort of known as hyperparameters to a machine learning model. And so some of them I would actually have to stop running the model and then I can start to play with it. So for example, this architecture one is something that I can actually make the model smaller. It be, might be less accurate, but it'll run faster. Um, but, uh, so, but, but so for example, I'm just gonna like change this to 0.75 instead, I'm going to run it again. But some of, these, uh, some of these parameters can actually be tweaked in real time. So for example, I can change the width and height of the image, which is actually uh, changing the, the resolution of the image from the webcam itself. Um, and I can, you know, I can make it more grayscale if I want. I can do various things to actually tweak the image before it goes in. But this is not the important piece of what I want to do in this video. What I want to do in this video is we have a moment here where I've got a model running in Runway, and I'm able to play with it, tweak it, get it exactly the way I want it to work, and I want to take that next step from having it run here to be able to see the results of it in my own piece of software. So let's make that happen. Um. The software that I'm going to use to attempt this in is something called processing. So let's, uh, let me write just in here, set up, uh, I'm going to say, um, let me actually set all this back to um, defaults. Is there like a set back to defaults button? <laughs> Feature request. <laughs> but I'm going to set this back to 320 by 240. Oh, 320 by 181. That's good. Let's run it again. That'll be good. I just want to like have it, uh, actually let's go, I just want to match the resolution. Let me set it back to, yes, three, 640 by 362, okay. Oh, interesting, I can mirror it, but I'm gonna leave it like that, all right. So since the size here in runway of the output is 640 by 362, what I'm gonna do in my processing code is set the size of the canvas to three, 640 by 362. Uh, void draw, background uh, zero. All right, so now I have a processing sketch, which I am running right here. How do I see the results, the output of the model in my processing sketch? So there are a variety of different network protocols that Runway supports, and I can find out about them up here by clicking this network tab. So I'm gonna click this network tab. Oh, interesting. Okay, sorry, I'm like just looking at things and discovering things as I'm going. So I'm gonna click this network tab, and the one that I wanna use for working with processing is OSC. So there's a variety of different reasons why you might pick one protocol over another, and it really depends on what you're doing. In the case of where I just want to get a single image, an HTTP request would make the most sense, and I'll do that in another video where I show you how to work with StyleGAN and Runway. But right now I'm going to click on OSC, which works pretty well with processing. And it's telling me a lot of information here. So it's saying, hey, this is the server address. So this is the most important thing that I need from Runway. It's what I'm going to tell processing is the 
unique IP address, which happens to be the local, local IP address of this computer, and the port number from which it can get the OSC messages. Okay, so um, I'm going to, this is, uh, copy this to the clipboard, and I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a string called like IP. I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to want the port number in a separate variable. I'm gonna create a port number uh, like this. Now, I could sit here <laughs> and write all the code for this, which is what I usually do in coding train videos, but this is a diff slightly different circumstance. I really just wanna get the example up and running and show you how to do this. And one of the nice things about working with Runway is there are a whole bunch of pre-made examples for you with different platforms and pieces of software, one of which is processing. So let me show you how you would actually do this in the real world, how I would be doing this, which is the way I'm gonna do it right now. So if I go to the uh, Runway ML GitHub, and I actually should go back one level and go here under Runway ML, you can see here's the GitHub page for the Runway software, and there's a lot of information. This is something, you know, there's some sort of like high-level stuff here about how to port your own machine learning model to Runway itself. So if you've trained your own model or you find a model that's not supported by Runway, how you could add it. But that's not what we're really doing here. What I want to look for is here, processing. Runway and processing. If I click here, this repository has a whole bunch of examples of using Runway with processing. So you can see there's a Street View one, Attention GAN, Face Landmarks, Image to Text, and voila, PoseNet. This is the one that I'm working with. So I'm gonna look at this example. I should say that this is an open source project. Uh, processing is an open source project that I'm involved with that I've talked about in a lot of other videos. So maybe this is a place where if you find another model in Runway that you've made work and you wanna contribute your processing example here, I would encourage you to do that. And uh, Chris, one of the uh, founders and creators of Runway and I have been talking about making a processing library for Runway. And it just so happens that I, ha that I made two recent video tutorials about how to make a processing job the library. So I see a project in the future, which is the run, a processing library for Runway. So if you want to get involved with that, with making that, um, you know, write in the comments and let me know, and maybe we'll create a GitHub repo for that. Okay, so I'm going to go here under PoseNet, and I'm just going to click here under PoseNet PDE. So I could just copy paste the whole thing, but I'm going to kind of go piece by piece. And you can see here already uh, Runway host and Runway port. So I made a mistake in my code where I made this a string. This should really be a number. So I'll do this, and there's some missing one here, which I'm sure everybody in the chat, <laughs> I already see it here, the dot one is missing. Um, let's uh, import the OSC library. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna import the o processing OSC library. Now, am I getting any errors? I'm not getting any errors, so I'm lucky. <laughs> For some reason, some time in my past, I needed this library, but you might not be so lucky. If you go here under sketch, import library, add library, uh, and I search for OSC, uh, here it is. OSC P5 and Open Sound Control OSC implementation. Um, you know what, it looks like I haven't installed this. Why don't I have an error? I'm just curious here for a second. Pause for a second, import library. Yeah, I haven't installed this. Why didn't that give me an error? Interesting how there's no error here. If I try, let me, hold on, I have to satisfy my curiosity here. OSC P5. Yes, okay, great. There's my error. So never mind, let me, let me back up for a second here for this eventually edited version of this. <laughs> um, <clears throat> extra one in the port. I got the port number wrong? Oh, that one made it in there. Okay, sorry. All right, let's just like back all the way up here for a second. I'll, I'll redo this part. <clears throat> so I got it. Oh, I'm missing the point one here, which I'm sure the chat is already talking about. <laughs> and there's an extra one here, and this should be an integer. So I have, and, and this should really be host. So actually, let me use the same variable names: runway host and runway port. Okay. So I think I've gotten this right now. Now, in order for the example to work, I need to make sure also I have the processing OSC library installed. So if I come over here, I can copy paste these import statements. I can copy paste this OSC object that I definitely need. And we'll see very quickly that I have an error, 
which is the class OSC P5 does not exist. This is because I haven't by, or installed the processing OSC library. You might have already have it installed because you use it with a different project. But I can go here and I can do sketch, import library, uh, add library. Um, I've, already, I've already got it searched here, but you, that won't look like this for you. You're going to want to type OSC to search for it. This is the library I'm looking for, OSC P5. I'm going to click install. It's going to install, <clears throat> and now you'll see that error message goes away. Just taking a break here for a second. All right. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, let's see, where are we? Oh, interesting. I've never done it this way with this properties thing. That's interesting. Let's, we'll use that. Set SRSP. I don't even know what that is. Do you know what that is? <laughs> I'm just curious. Let's look at the OSCP5 um, documentation. And under examples, under we just want to receive. Broadcast client. I feel like there's an easy way to just receive. Send receive is the example that I usually use. Listen for incoming messages. So I think, so I wonder if this example could actually be simplified <laughs> with just saying, uh, just making a sort of default OSC P5 object rather than this um, more, this uh, OSC properties object. Oh, I'm really doing the same thing. It's just instead of all these properties, I'm just putting the port in there. So I'm going to try it, and then I'll come back to this if I need to. Let's see if I can simplify this example. Okay. So let me just look here. OSC, new OSC. Like, I actually think you don't even need the broadcast location because you don't need to, uh, oh, you're sending connect and disconnect messages. So you do need the broadcast location to do that. Okay, got it, got it. So there might be something I'm missing, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll find out. We'll find out. I could, all right, so next up, let me just get this, okay. Where am I? Processing. So the, the next thing that I want to do is create an object to receive OSC messages. And I think I can just say, make this a new OSC P, P5 object. I need to give it a reference to this particular sketch because it's going to need to trigger events in the sketch when there's data available. And then just give it the port number. If you look at the, oh, oh, this is called runway port. Um, so it, if you look at the runway example, it's actually using this, um, object called OSC properties, which is a bit more sophisticated. It has a remote address, a listening port, a datagram size, and some other stuff. Um, I should probably just copy paste this into my example, but I'm curious if it'll work with just the sort of more simplified default OSC P5 object, where I just say this and the particular port. Um, but I do need this. I do need a broadcast location because I'm going to have to send messages to Runway as well, saying I'm connected or I'm disconnected. So, Let's take a minute to diagram this. That did not turn on. Where's this cable? There we go. What are the pieces here? There's my processing sketch, which I probably shouldn't, I'm gonna write P5 for short. I shouldn't do that, because it's too confusing with P5JS nowadays. How are we on time? We're good. Um, so there's two things at play here. There's the processing software and there's the runway software. They're both running locally on my computer. Now, 
it's possible that in other scenarios, there could also be a cloud GPU involved that Runway sends messages back and forth between. And this is something that I'm going to do in the next example where I work with something called StyleGAN. I'm going to have Runway also talk to a cloud GPU. But that's not happening here. PoseNet is actually running inside of, uh, basically wrapped into Runway itself locally. So PoseNet's running here in Runway locally. Processing is sending a message like connect. Like, hey, I want to hear information. That's a one-time message. And then Runway will just continuously send data via OSC to processing about what the pose it's detecting with the PoseNet model from the webcam input. So if I wanted, I probably could figure out a way to get the camera input into processing, send the image to Runway, and then have Runway send the results back. But Runway can connect to the camera directly, so I might as well just do that because that's pretty, e pretty easy. So I should also put here that the like, if I make a little note here like webcam, that webcam is talking to Runway. I might also have it talk to processing if I want to show the results in processing as well. Okay. Uh, so this is what's going on in this particular example. So I want to create this broadcast location, which is a net address object. So I need to put that in here. And then the first thing that I want to do is just send a connect message. So I'm going to copy this in and paste it here and say connect. So what I'm doing when processing starts up is it calls the function connect, which creates an OSC message. Uh, at, and so all OSC messages, what are, what's the lingo for this? Let me look this up. There's like an address and then a value, I think. But somebody must explain this somewhere. <laughs> OSC. <laughs> Introduction to open sound control. This will give me what I'm looking for. Oh. Specification. I just want to know the lingo. Um, data and address. I think it's just address and data. So that's that's what I'm going to that's what I'm going to use. Um, you can find out more here at this URL. Uh, okay. Every single OSC message is comprised of two parts. Those two parts are an address, which is usually uh, denoted as a string, kind of like a path. And you can see this is server slash connect. That's the address. Or you might also think of that almost as like the message name is the way I sometimes think about it. And then the data. Now, in this case, there actually is no data because the address itself is the message. So this is a very simplified thing where this connect message is just, hey, I'm connecting. So the name of the message, the address, is itself all, the only thing that needs to be, there's no data. But when Runway wants to send stuff back, it's going to send the message as, I forgot what the name is. What, is it just called message, maybe? <laughs> message keep, anyway, when Runway, is going to, when Runway sends data back, it's going to have a message name, like a data, or key points, or poses, something like that. And then that's going to have packaged with it lots of data, like all the XYs of all the positions of everything. Data is actually the name of the message, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. All right, so let's run this and see what happens. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. No errors. Uh, wait, hold on. UDP. I think I, I generally I ignore all these messages that are in here. Address already in use. That's weird. I'm not going to worry right now. Okay. So let's see. Then, all right. Skip that part in our nice edit. <laughs> now that I've connected, I should probably add the disconnect message as well. I don't know that, um, we don't actually need the disconnect message because it'll disconnect. I'm going to skip that part, okay. <laughs> now that I've connected, I want to listen for messages. And the way that that is done is with an event called OSC event. So this is much like mouse pressed or key pressed, 
or serial event or capture event. This is a function in processing that has a very special name called OSC event and the OSC P5 library knows to call that function when there's data coming in. So I'm going to just copy paste this and I'm going to put it in here and what I'm going to, so let's look, take a look at this. So there's an OSC event that has passed through an uh, OSC message. I'll just change this to message. And if the message has data, so this is like its address. Remember that? Its address has data. That's the address we're looking for. Oh no, if it doesn't, get out of here. So I want to ignore any other messages coming in. Then what I want to do is get the data itself. So the data of the message actually comes in as a string, but the string is formatted as JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. If you don't know what JSON is, I might refer you to a different video of mine that explains what JSON is. JSON, it works really nicely in JavaScript. It's a little bit awkward to work with it in processing because processing is Java, doesn't speak JavaScript natively, but we're gonna make it work. So the first thing in the message itself is a big string of JSON data, which then is a JSON object ah, that can be parsed with processing's parse JSON object function, and then I can just look at it in the console. So let's see if we actually get the data in. Am I sending it? I think I might need that other thing. <laughs> that I was really didn't think that I needed. Uh, okay, so this is happening. Let's see if any messages are coming in. And let's run that again. I have a feeling that there's something in that thing at the beginning <laughs> that I wanted to skip that we need. Let's find out. Uh, so let's go here and let me change this. I think I might know what the issue is. Um, so let me go back to here and see what this does. Oh yeah, now it's working. So I have a feeling I know what it is. Uh, I guess I'll come back to this in a second and try to re-explain it. So why did that not work before? I don't think it has anything to do with the datagram size or this set SRSP. No? Oh, that's, oh, maybe it is bigger than what it's used to. Yeah, so I don't know what, uh, this I might be able to, uh, who knows what this is, but uh, all right. So I, I botched this in my attempt to want to make this simpler, which I will now correct. Um, but interestingly, yeah. So I think it was just the size. But also, I think it was kind of freaking out because it was expecting the processing sketch. There's like, in, with OSC, there's a client and there's a server. And I think it was expecting the processing sketch to be the server, whereas really Runway is the server and the processing sketch is the client. <laughs> um, so the port is different in the, oh! Did I also get the port wrong? Did I actually put the wrong port in there? That's weird. No, but it says, ooh, weird. Oh, is this wrong? Wait, what's going on? Oh yeah, okay, weird. So it does need the data the, the datagram size. So why is this port 570? Oh, because have I just confused myself and there's two different port numbers for sending and receiving? Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I am totally confused. <laughs> All right, I have to I have to relearn OSC. Hold on. There's, there's a couple things, that, there's two reasons why it didn't work. One is I had the wrong port number, and two is I need this to be able to set the datagram size. So that's good, we're gonna be fine. This is good, we're gonna, I'm gonna explain this, everyone's gonna be super happy. Okay. 
Oh, wait. Oh, this says 5200 there. Wait. But I did this. This is what I had, right? Okay. Because. Okay. It's because they're on, it's all on the same machine. It has to be separate ports. <laughs> it's okay. I got it now. We're good. I'm going to, I mean, everything's going to make sense in about 10 seconds once I get myself set up here. I'm going to go back to where I wasn't getting anything. <clears throat> I'm not getting anything, and I'm wondering why, and I, I actually I know why, because I had to figure it out. So first of all, there's a clue to me here. It says, could not create datagram socket port 5100 because it's already in use. And I forgot there's a weird thing going on here. If I were using OSC to communicate between two separate computers, I could use the same port number on each separate computer because it's just one port number. But here, I need to be able to send data to runway at a particular port as well as receive data into processing at a different port. They cannot be the same port, otherwise it'll be in conflict. So the port that I am broadcasting to is 57100. That's what's listed in runway. But the actual port that I want to receive messages at is 57200. And maybe Runway knows just to add 100 to it automatically behind the scenes. But this is the default setup that's in Runway. So I need to have each of I need to have a different port for receiving the data as the port that I'm sending to. And let me show you what I mean by that in the code. So this is the Runway port right there, 57100. That's the port that I want to broadcast to, and it's part of my broadcast location. That's where I'm broadcasting to. But where I want to receive messages is actually 57200. So now if I run this, I'm actually receiving messages, but I've got a new error, array index out of bounds exception. So this is a rare case where the data that Runway is sending for all of these poses is actually quite large. And so what it needs is more space. It needs a bigger packet size. And so that's why in the runway example, there was this extra OSC properties object, which allowed setting a larger datagram size. So and the listening port is 57200. So just for using OSC P5 by default, you don't, you don't need to do this, but I'm going to copy paste this in. I'm going to put this back uh, here. And then I am going to change this to properties. And I think I now have all the pieces. And what I should see is, there we go, a lot of stuff. And look at this. Now I've got exactly coming into processing a confidence score. for. You can see, the, it, it clearly cannot see my left ankle <laughs> because my left ankle is not viewable to the camera. So that's why that confidence score is so low. Let's scroll up and do like right ear. It's got a very high confidence score and an X and a Y for my right ear. So now I'm at the point where I can actually use this data. Yeah, did not disconnect. Uh, James in the chat is pointing out that not doing the disconnecting step is kind of risky, but I'm going <laughs> to not worry about that right now. All right. Got to get to those style GAN rainbows. Okay, that's that's really what we're all here for. <laughs> I don't know if I oversold it. Okay, um, but I'm almost done with this. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to I'm going to make my own example that just draws the eyes, um, and then I'll point out that the the full example does the entire skeleton. Okay. All right. Going back to the runway example. You can see here that there's a very elaborate loop to parse through the JSON and look at all the different key points and get all the different positions of everything that it detects. I'm going to try to do something much simpler right now. I'm just going to get the right eye and left eye. So let's see if we can figure that out. So one thing I want to do is, I'm just looking here, OK. OK. Key points is an array. Got it. So I'd have to loop. Th oh, it's it's interesting. In ML5, we we changed the PoseNet API so that you could ask for something by part name. 
In here, it's an array. You have to loop through it. So uh, we're going to go through that. That's fine. All right, that's fine. I could actually might as well loop through all of them if I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, okay, so hold on. Go, let, me, let me start that over again, okay. So I might actually end up doing this anyway. Uh, get JSON object position, okay. So I'm gonna write this code. Okay. Let's now go, and so one way, so one way we can approach this is we can make this data variable a global variable. So I'm gonna take this JSON object and I'm going to make this a global variable. I'm going to call it data. And then in the draw loop, I'm just going to say, as long as data is not equal to null, I forget that I'm in Java, I can just do that. Data will be null until it's received something from runway. So as soon as it's received something from runway, all I need to do now is parse this JSON. Let me put this in a separate file. This will make it easier. Give me a second here. Let me open up Visual Studio Code. Now I think I can close all this other stuff. Um, and I can, uh, let me close this. Uh, pose net.json and do this. All right. Make it easier. Okay, and then let me. Something I've done to make this a little bit easier is I've just taken that JSON that prints it to the processing console and I've pasted pasted it into a um, <clears throat> pasted it into a JSON file that I can look up, look at in Visual Studio Code just so I have something to reference to. For. So I know that I need to get something called poses. So the first thing that I want is the poses array. So one of the things that's really weird in processing with JSON is you have to specify whether the data you're looking at is a JSON object or a JSON array. And this poses data is an array as indicated by this square bracket. So I'm going to say JSON array poses equals data.getJSON array string poses and let me just say then I'm going to then I want to get the key points array oh because there could be more than one pose but I'm going to assume there's just one pose so actually what I want so what, what I could do actually is just say so then that's the poses so then I'm going to say the key points are also an array equal poses dot get zero so that would be the first element of the array, now get a new array called key points, get a JSON array, key points. Okay, so this, the good news is the runway example has all of this in there, so if I get it wrong, key points. What's the error I've got? The function j get json array string does not exist. Poses, oh, because, oh, I have to get, ah, get json object. That's index zero. Wait, hold on, sorry. I have an error here because I can't just say get element zero. What is element zero? It's a json object. There we go. So now I have the key points, which are the JSON array called key points in the first JSON object index zero. <laughs> then, uh, what, can, what do I want to look for? Whoops. So now I'm in the key points array. This is element zero. If I knew, like left, left, oh, left, this is easy. Let's do nose, left eye, and right eye. Zero, one, and two. Perfect. So I want to get, um, sorry, I want to get JSON object nose equals key points get json object zero and we'll do we'll do three of these left eye i'm doing this a little bit different than the runway example and i'll point you to the runway example after right eye now I've, certainly i could use a loop here 
So nose, ah, I keep going to the wrong place. Nose, left eye, right eye, and then I need to get the position. Whew. Object, nose, pause equals nose, get JSON, object. I should just do the nose. I'm just going to do the nose, just to keep things simpler here. You can, you can extrapolate and figure out how to do the left eye and the right eye. Nose, get JSON, object, position, and then X equals, um, I'm going to call this nose position, nose position get uh, x, pretty sure this is right, and y equals nose position get y. All right, let's see, what have I gotten wrong here? Get float. Again, I'm in Java, I've got to specify the type. So if I've done everything correctly, I've gotten the f all the key points of the first pose, I've gotten the object with all the data for the nose, then I can get the nose position out of that object, then the x and y out of that object. Whew. Now, I'm going to say ellipse, x, y, uh, 20, 20, and let's make it a red nose. Fill 255, 0, 0. Let's give this a run, and there we go. I am now controlling my nose. <laughs> from runway into processing with OSC messages. Amazing. Okay, so this really concludes this particular video tutorial. Um, certainly what you might want to do is see the entire skeleton. You know, to use PoseNet effectively, you really want to have the camera probably around six feet from you. You want to back up and allow it to see your full form. You can also pass it images and get the pose, the skeleton off from an image. There's lots of different things you can do. But, um, and certainly I would recommend that you check the uh, example in the runway GitHub repo itself, which has a nice loop to go through all of the different positions. And actually it also has this little mapping um, to map what all of the connections are between them for the actual skeleton, skeleton itself. So as a little exercise, you know, see if you can expand what I did to have the right eye and the left eye, but even so you can just go get the runway example itself. So, but this is a guiding principle for how any particular model that you might find in runway itself, um, someone in the chat was just asking about dense pose, for example, that you can communicate from runway via OSC to processing. But in a lot of other cases, you might want to use WebSockets or an HTTP connection to communicate, particularly if you're working in the browser with JavaScript. So what I'm going to do in the next video, if you want to watch, is run StyleGand to generate a rainbow image and then pass that image into P5 and render it in the browser itself. Um, oh. <laughs> And breaking news from the chat, Damien writes, SRSP stand for send and receive on the same port. By default, OSC packets are not received and sent by the same port. If you need to send and receive on the same port. Oh, so maybe I could have actually done something with the port numbers. I have no idea. I'm sure people will write about it in the comments. But this code works, and the code in the Runway GitHub repository works. So have fun. Use it. Make something with it. Please share it with me. And hope you enjoyed this tutorial about Processing, runway, and the PoseNet model running locally on your computer. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is officially scheduled to be a two hour live stream, which means we got about 20 minutes left. This rainbow, I mean, I'll probably go a little long, which is fine. That's always happened, but I'm going to do the style again rainbows. So I can use the same port. So in that case, I wonder, where, I wonder where that other port in, is happening in Runway. Do you know, Chris? Is it like automatically configuring it to be like 100 up of this server address? Yes, that's the default you have. That's the default you have in Runway. No, new releases will edit the port. We'll like to edit the port. Okay, so in future releases of Runway, you'll be able to edit the port as well. Okay. In beta. In beta, yeah. Great. Um, by the way, if this isn't blowing your mind, you haven't tried to run any of these machine learning models without runway. <laughs> it's really, uh, no, Mateus is asking, do I have a flu? No, I have this like nervous tick. The longer I live stream, the more I start to get the sniffles. But I, last time I was sick, I had a cold, but today I don't. Um, all right, 
Let me stop this from running. Let me go back to models. Let me close out of, I'm gonna save this, quit processing. If you have questions, you can ask them now. I'm gonna do one more example. Um, and I'm actually gonna do this from the P5 web editor because I have done that before. Oh, shoot, I changed the, um, oh, it logged me in, perfect. I changed the password at some point. Okay, so. Uh, Usually I take like a break, but uh, I think I'll just keep going, but I'll take a short little break to read the chat for a minute. All right, we'll be doing the next one any moment now. If you have questions, uh, ask them in the chat because I'll answer, we'll answer a few questions um, in between. Yeah, so I think that, um, I'm, I'm noticing the chat, some people are saying like, um, oh, I'm gonna need to watch this uh, twice to understand what's going on. This is jam packed. I love it, which is a nice thing to say. Um, this, kind of, this is kind of a di little bit different than some of my live streams in the sense that I'm, I'm, you know, I have used Runway before. I used it in a presentation at the IO conference. I've used it in, uh, in some workshops and things that, I, I don't know that I've taught one at ITP, but I've definitely attended workshops at ITP using Runway and I've played around with it a bit by myself. But I really think of this live stream as kind of like a first exploration of Runway. Um, and then I might come back, I, I certainly will come back in the fall and do some specific tutorials that are part of my machine learning course that I'm gonna teach with Runway, as well as with ML5.js and TensorFlow.js and other platforms. But I think that um, I also might, it also would be interesting to think about what would be most useful in terms of a, a sort of sequenced tutorial series about Runway, and whether that's I'm making it or that Runway itself as a company might release one. But this really is meant to be somewhat exploratory. And so your feedback about like what makes sense and what's working for you um, after you try it, um, is, is really useful for me and also probably and also more importantly for the runway company. What's the best place for people if they want to ask questions or give feedback um, after today? We have a Slack. The Slack channel is the best place. So if you want to um, uh, if you want to join the Slack channel, I'm, I'm gathering that somewhere on the website here there'd be a link under resources. Why don't you scroll to Twitter? Oh the footer. okay. Um, Ah, uh, yeah. So um, here is where you want to go down to the footer and click here on Slack to join the Slack channel. And that's a place where you can um, ask questions and get support. And, you know, um, you know, you can also, of course, post issues um, and contribute on GitHub itself. But if you're a beginner or new user to the software, Slack is a great place to do that. Okay. Um, All right, I think it's time now to do the last tutorial. I almost want to consider this like a coding challenge video, but we'll keep this, I think we'll keep this as a playlist about runway for now. Um, definitely use style again. So I'm in the wrong window over here. Ah, uh, Simon is making a good suggestion, which also could be, uh, Simon, you could pull request this, I'm sure, to the Runway GitHub repo, that instead of using 9999999, there's a variable, uh, built-in variable max integer, max int, to get the max amount of space possible. Probably what would be best would be to find out what's the exact amount of space needed so that you don't have wasted space, but yeah, whatever works. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go. Let's. So I need to be here, and I need the web editor. That's it. 
All I need is that and the web editor, okay. And my brain to understand how to do this. <laughs> Oh, and I had a slide. Let me pull this up. Um, this, might, this is going to take me a minute. Let me pull this up. Um, oh, here's the, oh, this is lucky. Here's the starter code. Um, all right, so let's see. I want to... I, my mind just completely went blank. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but I was looking for something. Uh, oh, I know what I was looking for. Um, is this going to come up automatically? Uh, I.O. presentation. I.O. slides. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So my I.O. presentation had some slides about various things including runway, and this is what I want to have. So, um, if I do this, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just reference this um, like this. That's fine. Um, so I just want to, I'll, I'll mention this uh, when I come to it, okay. Okay. So I think I have everything I need right now. Let's start with this. I'm actually logged in as something here. Let's see if there's a really good one. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> I don't know, the first one's probably good enough. This one's kind of nice. All right, ready for this coding challenge? Okay. Oh, can I just like, hold on a sec. I feel a need to do something. Go away, trends. There we go, <laughs> thank you. Just don't want to see the, I don't want for the, all of perpetuity. If anybody comes to watch this video about style gan rainbows for there to be the like obnoxious Twitter trends from, you know, arbitrary date of today, whatever's happening in the news that's horrible. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. This will be the last, uh, last part of today's uh, live stream. Um, but I'll, after I finish making this, we'll have some time for some questions afterwards. Okay. Hello and welcome to a coding challenge, making style GAN rainbows. Wait, wait, hold on. No, generating. I want to use the word generating. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a coding challenge, generating style GAN rainbows with runway ML and passing those to P5JS to display them in the browser for our delight. <laughs> and so this is um, this is basically a making a version of software that I built for the I/O festival. Um, the talk that I gave at the I.O. Festival will be out on the internet at some point soon, and if it is, I will include a link to it in this video's description, where I generate, had people play a game on stage, and when they finished the game, an AI rainbow is generated and tweeted to the I.O. Rainbows on Twitter account. So I'm gonna build a little mini version of this today. So the, I'm gonna, and, and so the primary tool that's gonna do the generating of the rainbows is something called Runway ML. So this is the first coding challenge that I'm using with Runway. Um, and I've talked in a couple other videos in a live stream more about what Runway is, how to download and install it, how to sign up for an account, how to get some free credits and, um, and that sort of thing. So I'll refer you to that video if you want to find out more. So, but if you have Runway downloaded, find a link to download in the description. If, you're, if you've signed up for an account, and you're on the Browse Models page, you will find yourself here. And where you want to go next is you want to look for StyleGAN. Now, I see StyleGAN right here, but just in case you don't, I could type it in up here under Browse Models. 
I could click here. Um, this is now giving me generate photorealistic images of faces, landscape, and more. There's more information about the license for StyleGAN, uh, credits about who created and authored the original StyleGAN paper that you can find out about. But I just want to use StyleGAN, so I'm going to click Add to Workspace. And if you don't have a workspace already, you can click New Workspace. I have one called Coding Train Live Stream. And then here I am. Now, I can generate a variety of types of things with StyleCan, and these are known as checkpoints. So there are checkpoints you can see for cars and landscapes and portrait. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a checkpoint for rainbows? And guess what? There is. So I'm going to click the Rainbows Checkpoint. Then um, I'm going to choose the input source, which is just going to be a vector. And I'll talk about what that is in a little bit as I get to writing some code to do this. Um, and then what I want to do is click Run Remotely. So this is very important for me to be clear. This requires cloud credits that you have to pay for. If you sign up through the link in this video's description, um, there, you can also, you'll get free um, $10 in credits and there's actually a coupon code, Coding Train, which you can get an additional um, $10 in credits as well. So that's certainly enough to run this example. Um, um, okay, and there's also in the future, there, this, I think this is, mm, wait, pause, time out for a second. This model only runs remotely, yes? I'll just say. Some models in Runway you can run locally on your computer without using cloud credits, but this one in particular just runs, uh, only runs remotely at the, at the moment. So I'm going to click Run Remotely. It's running. So I'm going to give it some time to start up. <laughs> so generally it's always slow when you're first starting the model because it's got to kind of like boot up the instance. Also, whenever you're live streaming on YouTube, it takes five times as long as when you're just sitting at your computer by yourself. <laughs> that's, the, that's the way the world works. All right. So now we see it's starting to populate. And this is what's known up here as the latent space, this sort of space of imaginary rainbows that this generative model is producing. And this is one of the reasons why I love using Runway, is that I can actually just kind of browse around this space and look for uh, uh, kind of have this 2D view of this multi-dimensional world of all of these rainbows. And I can do things like, oh, I really like this one. And I could just change the output here to preview. And so I can see it here and I can download this one. And I have now have my beautiful style GAN generated rainbows. But what if I want to have these rainbows in my own software? If I wanted to show them on a web page or if I want to tweet them from my Twitter bot or any other types of Thing that you might be making, whether it's JavaScript or processing or open frameworks or some other piece of software that you want to connect to Runway. Okay. The way that you do that is through talking to Runway over the network. So over here in the bottom, I'm sorry, in the top right, there's a network tab. If I click on this, it's showing me a variety of different options. I can communicate with Runway over OSC. This is something I did in another video tutorial, communicating with processing and Runway over OSC to demonstrate the PoseNet model for detecting human skeletal poses. I could also use Socket IO for real-time web sockets, but really what I want to do is just an HTTP connection. I want to make an HTTP request. I want to post some data to Runway and I want to receive the image back. And in fact, there's JavaScript code right here out of the box that I could copy and paste. So I encourage you to just actually go and grab this JavaScript code and make your own example. But I'm going to do this using the built-in P5 function, HTTP post. So I'm going to write my own code for doing this, referencing everything that's here under the HTTP option. Um, That all is correct so far, I think, looking at the chat. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do next is, ah, OK, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Get data. I po I'm going to post a query. I'm going to post to the query route. And then that will return the image. And this is what I need to post, the array and a truncation number. I forget what truncation is. What's trunc? It's like a. It's it's kind of like how crazy it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's see. 
All right. My next step then is to go to the browser and I'm going to write this code in the P5 web editor. So first thing that I might do is let's make, let's make sure this is running, this works. Okay, great. Um, let's make a button, create button, um, and I'm going to call that button rainbow. And I'm going to attach that button to an event uh, called, uh, um, whoops, let me hit stop here for a second, uh, generate rainbow. So when I run it, a button will appear, rainbow, and then uh, presumably when I click the button, a function called generate rainbow will be executed. So I need to write that function. And in that function, this is where I want to send my request to Runway itself. So I need to make an HTTP post. So I probably want to look at the HTTP post. This is a P5 specific function. You could use fetch. I have some video tutorials about how to use the fetch function to make a post request, and you could do that here. But I'm going to use P5 in this example. So I'm going to go to the um, HTTP post reference page on P5. And this is going to show me the stuff that I need to include um, in the post request. OK, I'm just looking at this. So here's the stuff that I need. I need a path. Where am I posting this to? I need a data type, which is what kind of data am I sending along with this post request. Um, and then any op parameters data that needs to go along with the post request, as well as the callback and an error callback for getting information back. So this is a nice, I, if I just take this and bring this into my code, I'm just going to leave this, put this in the comments right here as a reminder. So what are the things? The path is, um, let's go look at Runway's telling me this. It's actually this, the server address, localhost po port 8000. So I'm going to paste that in here. The data type is uh, JSON. That's the kind of data. Then the data I'm sending is what? Now this is also given to me by Runway. And I need to, I'm standing a little bit in front of my code here. Let me just move this over. So this is the data I need to send to Runway. And Runway's telling me about that here. Input specification. What does it expect? It expects a uh, field called Z, which is an array of 512 floats. What is that? And then it if, requires some other value called truncation. What is that? So if you wanted to dive deeply into this input specification, you would probably want to do some more research on the StyleGAN model itself. Look at the paper, look at the GitHub repo, and kind of understand more about the neural network's architecture and its parameters, its hyperparameters that control its behavior. But I, whoops, for some reason have lost. I'm going to get the whiteboard, and I think I'm going to talk about vectors for a second to understand this. Um, by the way, how do you create the 2D latent space? Is it with a like TSNI or some kind of like Cl like clustering algorithm like that? It's using genetic algorithms. Genetic, genetic algorithms? Oh, that's the greatest thing I ever heard. OK, well, I'll come back to that then. <laughs> um, all right. I think it's worth, though, in a, for a moment, taking a minute in this video tutorial to talk about what this Z is, because it's a very important concept in machine learning. Um, so there is this machine learning model called StyleGAN. And it needs some kind of input in order to generate some kind of output. Now, the output that it generates is an image, 512 by 512. I mean, ultimately, what it's outputting is just a whole lot of numbers, but those numbers can be interpreted as colors of pixels and repackaged in an image. So that's happening for you by runway, right? We're seeing the output of it right here packaged as an image. But what's the input? I mean, ultimately, I don't, in this particular example, I don't care about the input. I just want, give me a rainbow, give me a rainbow, give me a rainbow. But in order for the model to generate a rainbow, it's got to start from somewhere. And in essence, I could start with something random. But 
what that random thing that I want to start with is, is something called a vector, referred to as z. And what it is, is 512 numbers. So I have this list of 512 numbers, probably between 0 and 1, between negative 1 and 1? One. Between 0 and 1. So generally, inputs to neural networks are normalized with some range. And in, this, in a way, this is like a unique signature for a particular output. So if I want to just get any so-called output, I can just make up a list of random numbers, and I would always get the same exact rainbow with the same set of numbers. So we could see that happen, right? If I fix a set of numbers, I'll always get the same output. But what I could do is tweak these numbers a little bit. Dial some up, dial some down, and that's going to change the output. If you've ever, and that's what you're seeing here in this space. What you're seeing here is rainbows with, that are attached to given Z inputs. And Runway is being very clever about showing you similar ones in a two-dimensional flat space on a computer screen. But actually, all of those rainbows that are generated live in 512-dimensional space. So um, that's kind of crazy and mind-blowing and very confusing. You know, I think I have a video tutorial where I do something with four-dimensional space and I can barely understand that. But this is kind of the weirdness of working in machine learning. It's, it's, you could imagine a three-dimensional space would just be full of rainbows in 3D. <laughs> like all over this room, there'd be rainbows everywhere. 2D, it's just like on a poster, like look at all the rainbows. But the only way to actually literally organize all of the rainbows generated by StyleGAN would be to have them all sitting in 512 dimensional space. Not a thing we can understand as human beings, so that's why Runway cleverly organizing them for you to look at in two dimensional space is quite useful. But you could kind of walk through that space, right? I could do a random walk from vector to vector to vector in that five dimensional space to produce an animation of kind of morphing, changing rainbows. And that's something you should really do after you watch this video and share it with me because I would love to see that. Okay, but now that I've explained this, let's go back here. Now, a little more context about this. For any one of these, this if I really like this particular rainbow, I can actually get that Z vector. Let me see if I can grab it. Um, where do I, do I get it under export? No. Um, I just look at it, like right click here, on oh, no, options, where is it? No. Input at the bottom right, input. Oh, this. At the top. This. At the top, yeah, the blue one. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, here. Oh, no, here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, import or export. Okay, sorry, let me come back to that. I'll just pretend I know where it is. <laughs> so what's amazing here is with this particular rainbow, this one that I liked, I can actually go right here and I can download that 500, those 512 numbers. So let me do that. Um, I'm gonna click this. Did I not click it correctly? There we go, oh, whoops. Oh, it, it downloaded, sorry. So let me click this and you can see it's saved to this directory, which let me find on my computer. You can click it oh, where do I click in the load? Oh, the, but I have, it has to like, I have to catch it. <laughs> I'm really bad at using a computer. <laughs> Let me try that again. Make it very seamless for the edited version of this video. <laughs> so let me come up, uh, what was I saying? So one of the wonderful things about this interface also is that over here, I can export that vector itself. So if I click this here, oh, let me try that again. Oh, I stopped the model. Whoops. Ah! What's happened? <laughs> I'm falling apart. Uh, let me restart Runway. And I'm going to go to Open Workspaces. This is good for us to see all these different parts of Runway. I'm back here. Let me run remotely. Why? What's it? Oh, is it running something? Is it running the Spade one? No. Settings. So here? And then, no, uh, the, the your profile picture. Ah, uh, this one? And then click stop all running. Got it. So if this happens to you, uh, oh, this is blocked because I didn't realize you can't see it here. I should have been doing a screen capture, but that's okay. Um, you're, if I go down here like I'm Choo Choo, 
<laughs> I can't see this. I'll just take myself off for a second. Um, if, you, if this happens to you, you, go, you can click here on your profile, and then you can go here and click uh, Stop All Running Models, which is what I just did. By the way, I haven't even spent a dollar in this entire live stream, which is really amazing. Uh, okay. Um, so now let me go back to here. I really wanted to show the vector, which is kind of like not that important because I'm going to just generate random ones. But um, all right, so let me go to uh, here. Uh, there we go. There we go. Um, is it not in the workspace? No. Wait, oh, I, I need to go here. Sorry. Then I need to go here. Perfect. Then I need to say run. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Let me get this back up and running again. I can also just find that. Where does it, where does it download stuff? Your downloads directory or your documents? Or is there like a runway folder? You can check it inside this. Uh, ah. So that is. Uh, oh, here, users coding train documents. Got it. So let me actually put this on the desktop. And then I'll put it here under favorites. So that will make things work really well. I disappeared. I know, I, I disappeared. I haven't put myself back yet. Uh, thank you for reminding them, me, though. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, Nathan is asking, can you even connect to Runway from the browser? Wouldn't Chrome not allow that? Well, it works. There's no reason you can make a request, an HTTP request to some of the server running localhost on your computer. I'm, I haven't had a problem doing that yet. We'll find out. Uh, uh, okay, so let me go back to Oh, yeah. In my settings, how do I close out of here? Do I close this? What's going on here? I think it's trying to stop everything still. Okay, hold on. Let's try it one more time. And open workspace, style gam, rainbows, run remotely. Oh, the save folder, I didn't actually change it. Try that. Oh yeah, I didn't actually change it. Uh, to runway, open, there we go. And then go back to here, and there we go. Ooh, I like this one. Oh, look at that. Wow, that's wild. Oh, I like these curvy ones especially. That one's pretty cool though. All right, so now, okay. All right, and then I'm gonna go here, and go here. All right. Okay. All right. This will be a little five ten. Okay. So. One of the nice things about if I'm working in Runway and I find a rainbow that I really like, for example, oops, oh, I can zoom in and out. This is nuts. This one's kind of crazy looking. Um, if I like this one, oh, look at this strange double rainbow. <laughs> so let's use this one. Um, so if I like this one, I can actually click here and export that vector, those 512 numbers, as JSON itself. So if I click here, um, and I click back here, I can see this is it. This is that JSON file. So um, I'm just going to go do like, um, I'm going to call this uh, rainbow.json. Let's actually go to the web editor. This is sort of nuts what I'm doing, but why not? Um, let's add a file. 
Then I'm going to drop this file in here. And then I'm going to look at this. And we can see, look, this is just that array of numbers. And actually, why, why even bother making it a separate JSON file? Because I'm just going to say const z equals this array. So I actually just literally copy pasted that array of numbers. Looks like, by the way, it's between negative one and one. <laughs> um, into, into my processing sketch. So um, I'm going to call this rainbow z. That, now, where was I? I was somewhere. I was over here in runway because what I wanted to do was send that array of 512 floats as the z property in the data that I'm sending. So I'm going to do z, rainbow z, and then I need truncation. So truncation is a hyperparameter, I'd spelled that totally wrong, um, associated with StyleGAN. If you want to learn more about truncation, you know, that's something you probably just want to read about in the paper itself. But it kind of changes the craziness factor in a way of the rainbow that you're going to get. Um, and it's a number, I believe that is a number between 0 and 1. And I think the default that's being used right now, my guess is that it's 0.5. So it's possible I'm actually going to get a different rainbow out if I'm wrong about that truncation number. But now I have the data. Then I need a callback and an error callback. So I want to post to a path. I want to post uh, that data type. You know, this is sort of silly to have this separate variable here. I can just put a JSON right in here. Um, then I want to post that data and I want to say got rainbow or you know got error. So I need two callbacks. So now um, I want to say uh, function got rainbow uh, data and let's just uh, console log the data to see if it comes back from runway. All right, we're going to run this. I'm going to click the rainbow button. <laughs> got error is not defined. Okay, fine. <laughs> I need to define the got error function. Got error, error, uh, console.log error. This is good for some error checking. Okay, now I'm going to press this button. Oh, I got an error. <laughs> what did I get wrong? Let's see. Oh. Uh, I'm running the model. Oh, I know what I got wrong. <laughs> I found what I got wrong. So the server address is localhost port 8000. But I want to make a post request to the query route. So this is actually what I need as the URL path. So I'm going to copy this, go back to my code. We're going to hope that this fixes it. Uh, I'm going to put that in here, slash query. Now I'm going to hit rainbow. Ah, look at that. So it console logs something. What in the world? If I know you might not believe this, but this is actually a rainbow right here. This is the strangest looking text version of a rainbow. But what's actually happening there? I'm getting an object. Oh, and it's got an image in it. But the image is just this sequence of all these characters. So this has to do with base64 encoding. Let's go back to Runway to make sure I'm right about this. You can see this is the output, an image. And that image is a base64 image. So this is a particular way that images can be encoded. Here's one way that an image could be encoded. The first pixel is a lot of red, a little bit of blue. You know, I could like, start like describing the image to you pixel by pixel. Or I could include an array of numbers that has the red value, the green value, the blue value. But it so happens that what we could do is cleverly take every color of the image and assign it to a character in like 64-bit character encoding. I, by the way, I keep seeing these like alarm bells going off, but there's nothing wrong. That was a message from a while ago. Um, I talked about base64 encoding in a whole other video. Um, let me just pull that up here. I, I don't need to go on and on about base64 encoding. Um, yeah. Six-bit base fixed 64 digits. Anyway, I, I don't. Uh, let me. I, I said 64-bit, which is absolutely wrong. So I want to double back and not say that. Um, 
Base64 encoding, it, first of all, this is something that I've used in a couple other videos where I've explained this more thoroughly, so I'll link to that in the video's description. But essentially, it's just a way of encoding all the colors of an image as ASCII characters. Um, so instead of having numbers for the colors, we have unique characters that, um, that correspond to certain color values. The nice thing about using Base64 is the web speaks Base64. So I can create an image very easily in JavaScript, in P5, with the base64 encoding of the image. So rather than console log that, let me try to do that. So I'm going to go back to my, and you can read more also about it on the base64 Wikipedia page, um, but let me go back here, and I'm just going to say create image data uh, image. So the property of the image property that of the data object that's coming back from runware has the base64 encoding in it, and p5's create image function knows how to turn that into an image element that will appear on the web page. So let me bring this over here. Uh, let me run this again. Let me hit rainbow, and there it is. Look, and it's the same one. It's the same one because I gave it this exact vector. But what, what might be more interesting here is why not make a random one each time? So I'm going to do this. Um, when I post, I'm going to create a I'm going to create a variable called rainbow z, which is an empty array. I'm going to loop all the way up to uh, 512, and I'm going to say rainbow z index i is a random number between negative one and one, and that's going to be the rainbow z. So now every time I get a rainbow, press the rainbow button, it will be a different one. So now I'm getting rain, random rainbows. Now here's the thing, they're kind of just by default making all these DOM elements. Maybe what I want to do is actually draw them onto the canvas. Um, so maybe I'll make the canvas, they happen to be 512 by 512, so I'll make the canvas 512 by 512. What I'll do is put this in a variable called rainbow image. I could push them into an array to save them. Um, then I'm going to say rainbow image hide so we don't actually see it, but I'll draw it onto the canvas. So now what this is doing is it's creating the image DOM element from the base64 encoding, hiding it from the DOM, and then drawing it onto the canvas. So every time I press this rainbow button, <sighs> hmm, what did I do? Let's not hide it. Oh, I think I might know what the problem is. Oh, oh silly JavaScript and your asynchronous nature, you. <laughs> I think I can't draw the image right here because it's not actually ready yet. So um, what I think that I'll do, since I happen to have a draw loop, is I'll move this here. And I will make this a global variable that I will declare at the top. You know, this is, I could do this in other ways. Um, and then I'll just check as long as rainbow image exists, I will draw it. So now this should give me, every time I click the rainbow button, oh, and I still want to hide it. Whoa, whoa, every time I click the rainbow button, I get a new style GAN generated rainbow right here in P5.js in the web editor being generated from runway from the cloud. Oh, we should do a diagram. Before I go, uh, where's the eraser? Here it is. Is this camera still on? All right. Let's review all the pieces in this example because there are a lot of them. So I have my own laptop that's sitting there on the table over there. And there is the web browser running. That's the thing that's running. And there is also the software Runway that's running. Now Runway has spun up a local server at localhost 8000. The browser is actually making requests to the P5 web editor server. Uh, which you don't necessarily have to do. I could just develop my JavaScript locally, but I'm actually writing my JavaScript code from the P5 WebJS editor. But it is executing and running that code locally in the browser. So this is kind of not a super important point, but it makes a post request to Runway. 
So when it makes the code makes a post request to Runway, Runway in turn runs on the, the style GAN model on a cloud GPU. You need to have credits to do that. That is returned back to Runway, the resulting rainbow, and then sent back to P5 and rendered in the browser. <laughs> the diagram didn't turn out like I imagined it, so I thought it would be more interesting, but these are the pieces. P5 and Runway are both running locally, and they are, but, but the actual style GAN model is running on a Runway server in the cloud that you have access to through your account. Now, at some point you might realize, well, what if I wanted to create a website where that would show style GAN rainbows? I mean, you, you can't run, runway locally on your laptop, but then a website that's deployed somewhere else, how would you manage that? So if somebody opens up your P5 sketch, it won't work unless they're running runway themselves on their local computer. But stay tuned, I know that runway is developing features to be able to deploy your server that's running the style game model to like a you know, permanent URL in the cloud somewhere that you could then have your, your JavaScript programming accessing that other people could run without having to install Runway themselves. So that's something that you can stay tuned and, and follow in the future development of Runway. Um, the other thing that's really important for me to mention here is that this StyleGAN model doesn't just exist by accident. Um, so the StyleGAN architecture is something that comes from the original StyleGAN paper and pre-trained model. And then one of the creators and founders of Runway, um, Anastasis Hermaninis. Germaninis? I'll say that again. <laughs> Anastasis, are you watching? I should, I should do well with Greek names, but I don't. Um, um, one of the founders and creators of Runway, Anastasis Germanidis, actually trained a particular checkpoint for StyleGAN with rainbows. And these were, this was trained with 5,000 images tagged with the word rainbow keyword, sorted from relevance from the Flickr API using this um, scraping uh, code to scrape from Flickr from uh, Sam Levine anti-boredom on GitHub. So if you want to find out more about training your own checkpoint with StyleGAN, I would refer you to these resources, which I'll include in the video's description. Okay, so what are you going to do with this? I hope that you use this StyleGAN rainbow model for something fun. But more likely, hopefully what you're taking away from this is the fact that you can write JavaScript code that connects to Runway running a machine learning model that's actually running in the cloud. It could be running locally also, depending on which model you're using from Runway if it supports that. Um, and then get, send a post request, connect via WebSockets, connect via OSC, all sort, some, some network connection to Runway, get the results back and use that in your own web application. I would love to see people figure out interesting ways like how would you not, how would you generate the rainbow vectors in such a way that you're kind of doing a random walk through that latent space, that sp five di 512 dimensional space. Um, so that's something you could really think about and play with and render something out perhaps. Um, you might not even need to use JavaScript. You might be able to do this even more um, you know, from processing, for example. But uh, if you make something with this, please share it with me. Um, go to thecodingtrain.com, the coding challenge page associated with this particular uh, example, which you'll find linked to in this video's description. And may, may, us, may we fill the world with more and more uh, generated rainbows. See you soon. Goodbye. Uh, <clears throat> um, so, okay, so I've got one question here from Nathan in the chat. Um, which, who asks, why not send the image directly as binary data instead of as base64 in a JSON response? <laughs> Good, I, I'm reading the expression on Chris's face, and I think the answer perhaps, so you could tell me if I'm wrong here, is, Good idea. Um, I think Base64 is probably chosen as a kind of standard, a web standard, a convention. It's very easy to pass around because you have, you're able to take so much information and pack, pack it into one character. But I could imagine there are other scenarios where you might want that binary data. So I, that could potentially be a future uh, feature of Runway. And I would encourage you to join the Slack channel and, and suggest it there. Uh, what other questions do people have? So I think we can take, um, maybe five or 10 minutes here to, um, to answer any questions. You can ask them in the chat. Chris can type them directly. Or um, I don't know if you want to just at least come and wave hello. People can see your face. <laughs> hello. Um, or he can come up and answer. I think my mic will pick him up. 
Um, but we could take a few questions before I go. Hello, everyone. Here's Chris. Can you hear Chris if he talks? Uh, I hope so. I yeah. Hope so we'll see that in the chat. Um, so we'll see. So uh, if you are in this, uh, for, for Coding Train members or patrons, there's a Slack channel. You can ask stuff in there, which I'm looking at. I'm also keeping an eye on the YouTube chat. Now this is the awkward thing where we just stand around because they're 30 seconds behind. Um, I'm thinking of deployment. Won't that open up to other people spending all your credit? Yes and no. We're working on ways of deploying your models to production so you won't spend your credits. It will work in a different way. Uh, and that way you have like a remote URL that will always be available for you until you kind of like stop it. Um, and that will be different from running your credits. Yeah. But in a way, it's no different than if you have to like spin up a web server for your web application and you have to pay hosting fees for that. This is just like sort of new kind of hosting GPU fee that you have to pay to run your web application. Yes. But ideally, there will be in the, you know, as many open source or ways to run your own to like reduce that cost or make it sustainable for independent creatives and artists. And I think that's something that Runway is working towards, which is different than what you know, large corporations can do with their giant server farms. <laughs> um, <clears throat> would you use Perlin noise for that? Oh, interesting. I don't know what you're asking exactly, but generating the inputs with Perl and noise could be kind of interesting. Um, it's not that you wouldn't, what, what, what you might discover from that, I would think of it less as like you're using the Perl and noise space to fill a vector, but you might use Perl and noise to move from one vector to another so that you're just like subtly changing all the individual values a little bit. So your next rainbow is pretty similar to the previous one. But that would be like a way of having a random, another way of thinking about a random walk. Um, somebody asked for like recommendations of um, books to learn machine learning. Do you have any that were really helpful for you? Mm -hmm. I do know, while you're thinking, I do know that there's, I don't know if it's out already or if you can, if just the, but there's one um, that's the Deep Learning with TensorFlow JS book. I think it's coming. That's like, I think you can get the like um, the book, the Meep which is like the, yeah, deep learning with JavaScript. So I think this book is coming um, and the Python version out. Is oh, and the Python version is excellent. So there's a Python version by Francois Cholet, the creator of Keras, which I have ref uh, definitely used. It's been excellent. Um, okay, whoa, spin for a chance to win. Hi, right, let's do it, everybody. This Manning Publications, not a sponsor. Boy, they're so good with their advertising techniques. I got 50% off. I'm not entering my email. Sorry, Manning. Um, okay, uh, any other questions? So let's see, what other things do I want to say before we go? So number one, uh, if you have more questions about Runway or you want to teach a workshop with Runway or you want to get involved with Runway, apply for a job, uh, contribute to some of the... Um, open source components of Runway, um, then I would suggest, uh, I'm gonna go just show you again, uh, signing up here under Slack. What do I get if I click on community? Uh, just try it. Okay. <laughs> Super. Uh, okay. Um, just resources for you to get started. If you're thinking about posting a workshop, a meeting, uh, uh, any type of like, and like, yeah, you can also browse through the previous uh, workshops or things were oh, cool. um, taught with Runway. Yeah, if you happen to be in the New York City area, Runway hosts uh, periodically meetups at their yeah. offices that I, I've been to at least 50% of them and it was pretty awesome. So I highly recommend keeping an eye on that. I know that the School of Ma, I think, is yes, using. Yes, the Now Teaching and Workshop. The oh yeah, one. is yeah. it this bots one? Yeah, this, that one, that coming. one, and that's also coming in Amsterdam, which is. Ah, cool. awesome. So this is um, an independent uh, artist run school in, uh, I believe based in Berlin. Um, that is currently running a workshop. I think Inning Shi yes. is teaching it, um, who you might have remember from previous episodes of The Coding Train, um, uh, is teaching that. And then it looks like there's another upcoming one <laughs> in Amsterdam. Ooh, July. Do I have time to make it to Amsterdam by next yeah. week? That would be awesome. I can't, this month is so crazy. I gotta, gotta move ITP to a new building. Um, but, uh, and the, this was the runway meetup um, yeah. that was in Brooklyn, and there's some other ones listed here. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Can your, uh, let's see, Good, Goodfellow's book is free. Thank you, Kay Weekman. Um, 
do you think your random walker tutorial would be useful for 512 dimensions? Yes. So ultimately, what I'm suggesting, and I haven't tried this, and I'm certainly not an expert on generating you know, you, you, like artistic renderings of you know, machine learning models generating images in latent space. But if you want to actually look at some artists who do this really beautifully, uh, Memo Atkin is one that comes to my mind. I don't know if just on his homepage if stuff will come up insta instantly. Um, but he, um, uh, AI machine learning maybe is where I would want to click here. But um, this is definitely an artist who's done a lot of work in that area. I know that YG, who's an ITP current student in my recent sh uh, video about the ITP show, uh, had a project with um, AI generated cats, like a little movie generated cats in latent space. But all that is to say that the random walk, which takes an XY point and adds random numbers to the X and random numbers to the Y to get the next point, all you need to do is apply that same thinking to 512. X, Y, Z, U, V, but we're going to run out of letters, so just think of it instead of X and a Y as an array of two numbers, but instead of an array of two numbers, an array of 512 numbers. That's the right idea, right? Yep. And, and probably you could do some interesting things um, about wandering that space and coming back to where you started, so that you could create a sort of perfect loop. So there could be ways of thinking about doing that. Um, and Gene Kogan is um, also, I, I, I sort of like didn't reference Gene Kogan because that's kind of like, but of course, but you might not uh, be familiar. ML4A, uh, the ML4A website has a lot of tutorials and resources. I'm not sure if any of these are currently using Runway. Some of them Some are. of them are, but um, this is a really amazing resource for getting started with machine learning for artists. In theory, if I can get my act together, I'm teaching a course at NYU. It's an undergraduate course called Introduction to Machine Learning for the Arts. And so I'll be going through a lot of different projects with, primarily with, the main things I'm going to use are TensorFlow.js, ML5.js, and Runway. So hopefully I'll be making more videos, possibly with the YouTube learning playlist, which I need to talk about before I go. Um, so I'm just looking for how to access mouse code for Mac. Um, sorry, old Firecraft, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. I'm also tr unfortunately trying to limit the questions now to runway related stuff. But that's a really great question you could ask at discourse.processing.org. And you're always welcome to tweet me a link to your post or post a link to your post in a comment that I, I can take a look at it as well. Update on the promo code. What's that referring to, Nathan? I don't know what that's referring to. The promo code is just coding train, if you're asking for the promo code for runway. Um, okay. Um, okay, so uh, so um, thank you, Chris, so much for being here. Yeah, uh, there you. are many other people who are involved with Runway and community and yes. developing and design. So check out the Runway website to find out all those people. Yes, um, I'll be here in the chat still. With and yeah, the chat will run for a little while. I'll let the music play <laughs> and let the live stream go for a little bit. So Chris will still be in the chat if you have questions. Yeah. Um, the last thing that I want to mention before I go, which is super exciting, I wasn't able to say this before because it wasn't publicly announced, but um, let's see if this happens. So I'm going to go to the home page for the coding train, and I'm just going to like arbitrarily click on, oh, look at this. This is new. Ah, oh, it actually says this here. Full learning playlist. So there's a new feature on YouTube called learning playlists. It's in beta. I was in the uh, learning playlist beta <laughs> to create some of my, to put some of my existing content into the learning playlist. But more notably, probably, if, where's, where's pop, pop, I don't want popular uploads, I want uploads. Um, this particular, um, this particular set of videos that were from the working with data and APIs in JavaScript playlist are part of learning playlist. So I just want to show you some of these features. Uh, I'm not logged in uh, because I have YouTube Premium, so I don't have to watch these ads. And I always try to be logged in. Uh, um, no, Dash Lane. Go, come on, you can do it. No, oh, it's showing the password. Oh no, I've changed. Did you all see that? That's the worst. I click the I and I just show my password. I do this constantly. I really have to check. This, that's bad. Um, hold on. How do I change my Google password? Just be nice, people. Please don't ruin the internet for all of us. Uh, security. Password. Oh, I do. Oh, two-step verification. Oh, that's the one account that I don't actually have it in. Um, 
change password. Good. Ah, success! I changed my password before any of you can. Ah, you know what's so great about the 30 second lag? No wonder you weren't able to hack it. You didn't see it. Oh, jeez. What a nightmare. Oh, now my email's up. Oh, no, but my, the screen's not up. Okay, great. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad I have this button. Okay. Uh, here we are back on YouTube. <laughs> um, and um, you can see now that there's this link here, learning playlist, and also browse all learning. So one thing I'll point out, if you go to um, that, this is YouTube's learning channel with a lot of other learning playlists. I definitely would recommend this one from Jabril's about everything you need to start programming. It's pretty awesome. Somewhere on here, maybe I'm featured if I'm lucky. Introduce, oh, there I am. Uh, code program with P5JS. If you like this learning playlist, um, or you just want to like be nice to me, <laughs> you could tweet at like they're really like you could tweet with the hashtag, I don't know, YouTube Learning I think, or at YT Creators. Say how much you like the Coding Train's new learning playlist or something. <laughs> I, don't, I shouldn't like beg for this kind of stuff on the internet. It's very very unbecoming of, of me. But anyway, so I, I I'm excited about this feature. If I click on it, you can see there's a new interface. So the course trailer pops up here. You can see the different um, sections are divided, showing you how many videos there are. Um, you can actually, you know, you can save it, so it'll like keep track of you in it, um, of or your progress in the in the course or the playlist. Um, and so I recommend you uh, taking a look at those. Oh, it's interesting. It's my intro to code one that's featured there. And actually, crazily, um, where is that YouTube blog? So if I go to Twitter, and I go to um, this kind of blew my mind, uh, even though nobody noticed it. Uh, somewhere here, learning playlists. Boy, they tweet too much. There's this whole like VidCon conference that I completely missed. Here it is. So here, if you go to this tweet and you click on here, um, this official blog from YouTube from Thursday, July 11th, if you read this through, and you read about all this other nonsense stuff. And look at this, there's this chemistry course from Hank Green. You can see the screenshot of the learning playlist. You can click right here and you're, uh, this, is, this, is, this is the experience I had reading this blog post. It's like, oh cool, they're announcing the learning playlist. Oh, and they're featuring chemistry. Oh, and a working in Java playlist. Oh cool, they're featuring a programming one. I wonder who made a Java playlist because I certainly didn't make a Java playlist. Let me click on this link to find out what YouTube channel has a Java, learning to code in Java playlist. So then I clicked on that link and it took me here and I was like, wait, no, oh, I must have misclicked because this is my playlist and it's JavaScript. Let me go back to that and let me click again. And then I ended up here and I realized, oh, they actually linked to my playlist on the official YouTube blog, but um, they kind of got the topic wrong. But that's fine. I'm, I'm not one to complain. Thank you for linking to me. It made me very happy. Um, all right. Nobody has my email. Nobody's reading my email. Nobody has my password, right? We're good? Can you let me know in the chat if you've hacked my account? <laughs> I'm just going to check. Just going to check really quickly. It's funny, I have two-factor on for everything, and I think I'm gonna turn that on, right, except for my Daniel at Coding Train account, because I don't actually use that one, but apparently now I do use it. So I'm gonna go to security. I'm gonna turn on, just, you don't mind, you ask questions about Runway in the chat. I'm just gonna be here doing my two-factor authentication. I'm turning that on now so that this doesn't happen in the future. Oh, can you hear that? <laughs> Oh, your password was changed less than an hour ago. I guess I'll have to do it later. Right, so if your password was changed less than an hour ago, it doesn't let you add two-factor authentication. That's fine. You should really use a password manager. <laughs> Go back and find an old video on the coding train that had a sponsor that was a password manager. Look at this, I've never seen this before. Um, your password was changed less than an hour ago and um, um, uh, find that affiliate link. It's not an affiliate link, it's just a, a, a link. Whatever, and go sign up. <laughs> okay. Ah, there's my email. Shoot. That's all right, I'll be able to cut that out very quickly later. All right, uh, so unfortunately this live stream is now ending, um, and I'm gonna have to make it private.
fit very briefly. <laughs> so I think well, YouTube let, lets you like cut out a frame. Um, and uh, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> I will see you later. Uh, so I don't know when I'm coming back. Stay tuned to my Twitter. Stay tuned to um, other stuff. Um, uh, check out the community tab if you're if you're a member or a patron. I've got some stuff that I'm thinking about and changing the rewards program. So stay tuned. I hope to see you in a, in a future live stream. Look for some of the new videos coming out soon. And um, what was I going to say? Um, I will. I might be back, but. I will definitely, oh no, I definitely will be back, but I might not be back until late August or early September. But if you see a notification pop up that there's a live stream, that means I'm doing a special surprise live stream. So see you soon and goodbye everybody. <laughs>